Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the DTM Esports 2022. Today we're at the Norris Ring, and I am Luke Crane, and I'm joined by Connery Maddock. Connery, how excited are you for this one? Yeah, uh, incredibly excited. We have a, a quite a turbulent affair last time out at Imola for our first round of the season to kick things off here in the 2022 DTM Esports Championship. But this week we head to the Norris Ring, which uh, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Well, during last year's DTM trophy, I was told in the chat many a time, it's like Lando Norris. So we actually called it the Lando Norris ring for the year. <laughs> uh, so that's how I would pronounce it, Norris ring. It is one of the most unique, if not the most unique circuit I have ever been to or even commentated on. It is four corners. It is as simple as that. It is short. It's a sub one minute lap. It is going to be frantic. It is going to be exciting. But let's check out the calendar for the whole season. Of course, we've already had Imola. Imola was incredible. It was the Moritz Lerner versus Kevin Siggy show. But this time around, we are at the Norris Ring. Again, a very short circuit here, as it is the 24th of March. And then we've got kind of a, a special little double header for you. So in two weeks' time, we head to the Lausitz Ring. And uh, that is the 7th of April. Same time as what we're doing right now. So 6 p.m. in the UK, 7 p.m. in Europe. And then only three days later, Later on the Sunday, we will be heading to Spa Francorchamps again for another double set of races. So that's a Sunday evening race. And then we head to the Red Bull Ring on the 21st of April. And then we head to Portimao to round things off. 12 races in total, one sprint race each week, and then a one hour long feature race. Super, super exciting. But let's check out the format then. So I've just mentioned uh, pretty much what the format is. Let's have a little look, see at it on the screen. So free practice, 105 minutes. You don't need to be worried about that because that has pretty much been done and dusted. Um, the stream start. Oh, well, we're live. You, if you can hear me right now, then you know we're live. Qualifying one, it is 10 minutes only. So they get 10 minutes to set their best time. And then it's a 15 minute sprint race, which round Norris ring will be absolute carnage. I've predicted that it's going to be around about seven tenths of a second between the whole field. Who knows how close they're going to be. And then we have our second race, which is qualifying two, 10 minutes of that. Again, same uh, time as qualifying one. But the final race is a full 60 minute race with a 30 minute pit window. And Connery, we saw last time out that made a huge difference in terms of strategy between our two front two drivers. Yeah, it absolutely did. And, uh, well, it got relatively close towards the end as the freshest tyres started to come through. But, of course, we do have a little bit of an amendment to make with regards to the point standings, which we'll look at in just a couple of moments' time with regards to that, because there were a couple of post-race decisions uh, come in that have affected the championship somewhat. Uh, but, yeah, that, th these endurance races, yes, they're long in, in the grand scheme of things, maybe not so long in terms of you know, 3, 6, 12, 24 hour endurance races. However, it's long for DTM esports races and that's the important thing. Usually maximum we get about 40 minutes in these sort of things. An hour is a completely different beast. Yeah, well, we saw last time out Kevin Siggy, as soon as the pit window opened uh, at the 15 minute mark, he pretty much came in uh, and he went for a long stint on a second set of tyres till the end of the race. And um, he came out of the pits maybe, I don't know, eight to nine seconds ahead of Moritz Lerner. Moritz mm -hmm. Lerner came into the pits pretty much at the last time of asking. He had 20 minutes to go with a fresh set of tyres and he caught up to him. There was nothing between them, but Siggy did come out on top in that second race. Moritz Lerner winning race number one. But let's check out then the standings of last last week or what we have from last week as you can see there kevin siggy for team redline is on 80 points uh, he leads our championship heading into rounds three and four uh, moritz lerner for der esports is on 75 points in second and we've got isaac price in for bmw g2 esports he's in, uh, on 49 points then we've got leonard krippner uh, again for der esports on the 48 points we then got christopher hugvelt for r8g esports on 46 45 then for alessandro ottaviani another r8g esports driver only one point back out of that top five. Florian Hasser for Dura Esports then. Uh, three Dura Esports drivers in the top seven uh, as it stands. He's on 43. Then we've got Gianmarco Fiducci from Team 4 Dilla with 42 points. Axel Vermeulen is on 31. And then Marco Pejic rounds out that top 10 with 29 points. An incredible 10 drivers there at the top, but there are more than 10 drivers in this championship, aren't there, Connery? That can really spring a surprise, especially around a circuit such as the Norris Ring today where you know, you, it doesn't take much to master it, really. You know, anybody who's had an hour with this track will be feeling pretty comfortable. 
Yeah, I think so too. It's um, it, it's going to be an intriguing one, shall we say? Like you said, it's the shortest lap time that we have on the calendar, and like you said, you go around, you know, for five minutes, you've basically done ten laps at that point, and uh, you're gonna get used to things rather quickly. We'll have to see how that factors in, though, because there's this other element of it, of it being a street circuit. There's not a lot of room to maneuver in some of the corners, not a lot of runoff if you have an issue. Uh, so you know that might cause cars to bounce back into the circuit, back into the racing line in the worst case scenario. So we could have the potential to see some big instance here today. We hope not, and we get uh, clean racing all the way through today. Uh, however, that's one thing you do have to keep in mind. Yeah, we saw last time there was a bit of a disparity between a Ferrari and the BMW. They were the two quickest cars, but the Ferrari was really good through corners, and the BMW was just an absolute rocket ship in terms of straight line speed. There's not really any long straights here. I guess out of turn four up towards turn number one is the biggest straight, but it's not really long enough to take full advantage uh, of, a, of a, a better powertrain, uh, so to speak. So today, I think it could be in the hands of the Ferraris. Could the AMGs spring a surprise? Who knows? But anyway, we've talked about the track here. Uh, I will just quickly mention what the prize is for this. The top five in this championship after 12 races they will all be uh given a sighting experience and they'll go to one of the dtm races this season and they will go through some challenges and they will be judged uh, by dtm themselves and the best candidate will actually win a fully paid for drive in 2023 in the dtm trophy and talking of DTM Trophy drivers, Moritz Lerner, our current DTM Esports champion, is a driver from the DTM Trophy from last year and will be competing in 2022 as well. And actually, he has given us a cheeky little track guide here. It's not going to be long, but here is the Norris ring in the eyes of Moritz Lerner. Hello, I'm Moritz Löhner, current DTM Esports Champion and also DTM Trophy Driver with FK Performance. And today I'm going to take you a lap around the Norris Ring, my home track in my BMW M6 GT3, which I'm also going to be driving in the DTM Esports Championship. Off we go. Um, around the last turn, you need a good exit for a fast lap time. Um, put all the traction down and then you should be good to go for the long straight, longest straight of this uh, very short track in general. You only have like four corners, so you gotta make it count everywhere. Down to turn one, best overtaking opportunity in my opinion. Um, you break slightly before the media mark banner here. Down into first gear. Take it very tight um, onto the stone drainage um, if possible. And then a good exit, you need to put all the traction down, no wheel spin. And then onto the Schöller S, there's a slight tarmac change on the ground. This is my breaking point. Very tight on the barriers. And then be careful out of the turn because uh, the track is off, uh, off camber. You can lose the car there very easily. And then already onto the last turn, you brake slightly to the apex, towards the apex, also tight here. And then put all the power down for the exit. And that's already the lap. We are, we are on the main straight again. Um, yeah, good exit. And then you take all the speed through the or over the start finish line. And that's, that's your lap at the Norris Ring. Pretty short, very exciting, um, but also quite dangerous, especially turn one here. A lot can happen, especially at the start, but also um, when a lot of people want to overtake. I think we will see a lot of action there, um, and I can't wait uh, for the race. Hopefully it all goes well. See you there. So there we go, we've just gone and seen Moritz Lerner do a lap around there. We're about to see him do some laps around here as well, uh, but we're actually in qualification for this race now. So they've got themselves eight and a half minutes here, plenty of time. They'll probably be able to do 970 laps in that time, uh, as ridiculous as short as the circuit is. Uh, Florian Hasser currently is the fastest out there with a purple sector number one. Connery, what are you expecting here? Um, I'll be expecting the Ferraris and BMWs to be put under a little bit of pressure today. Uh, <sighs> It could be the case that I would expect the Ferraris actually compared to the performances we saw from the Ferraris at Imola with how good they were through the corners, like you said, they potentially might be the faster category or faster manufacturer here today. And well, I'd be, my point has been proven slightly due to the fact that Siggy and uh, Ottaviani and Bowden have put their three Ferraris, now four Ferraris at the very top of qualifying on the first time of asking. 
Yeah, Jack Heatley is the only driver at, in the top six that's in a different manufacturer. He is in the AMG. Um, we know that AMG is going to come strong at some point. Whether it will be here or not uh, remains to be seen. I think Spa might be the uh, the circuit where the, the AMG really comes into its own. RHG's uh, hook belt there we're just seeing cross the line. But you can see how close everybody is on circuit. It's so difficult to get any real clear track. It's just a case of get out there. If the clear track presents itself, it presents itself but just try and get as many cleanups in as possible and see whether you can get a real flyer in there yeah exactly track position is going to be at a premium uh, when it comes to not only qualifying but the race as well it's going to be very very hard to find your own little bit of room to try and work in so these drivers are going to be absolutely nose to tail through the vast majority of both qualifying and the races here today as well and that complex uh, that uh, makes things a little bit more complex when it comes to pit stop strategy as well when we get to that endurance race because um, the drivers that will be able to pit and find themselves in a little bit of a pocket to run in some clear air and to not get held up by anyone well, that's going to be ultimately very, very beneficial for the races. Yeah, 100% will be. Uh, again, we saw last time out, Connery, that both races are completely different. You've got to just try and get something done as early, early as possible in race number one being a 15 minute race, a sprint race. These cars really are not built for that kind of racing. Um, and then you've got the one hour race where you can be a little bit more, um, I don't know, methodical with your approach to it. Uh, but also you can be a bit more strategic in terms of the pit stop, which we saw two completely different strategies. And they pretty much had exactly the same race time in Moritz Lerner and indeed Kevin Siggy. So it's going to be interesting to see what a tire wear situation will be here around the Norris ring. I'm assuming it's going to be, especially on the rears, because you've got these two major hairpins in turn one and indeed turn number four where it's just trying to get that power down becomes very very difficult the longer you go on um so whether that means that, we, that people can split their strategy and whether it means that they have to just come in pretty much on a 30 minute mark remains to be seen but we're here for the sprint race five minutes 50 seconds to go Viducci is two thousandths of a second behind siggy it is super super <laughs> close they've got nearly two tenths to work with uh, with third and fourth in behind but it is super super close and as much as it looks like there's big overtaking opportunities around here quality is going to be key because slipstream is not the biggest factor unfortunately yeah and you usually rely on that slipstream just like we saw at Emma to try and get those passes done into the heavy braking zones but like you said there's no uh, there's no obvious opportunity to do that here and uh, you're gonna have to try and do it on your own merits uh, and via some other way but uh, having a look at qualifying well, as you say Siggy at the front only by two thousandths of a second though Gianmarco Fiducci giving him a very very good run in that uh, Team Fortilla Ferrari of course again like I mentioned the Ferrari is very strong here today our highest placed BMW who other than Moritz Lerner at the moment uh, a three times uh, well uh, current reigning champion of this series and uh, well, he had a good performance coming out of last round. Of course, didn't quite get that race win at the end as he was trying to chase down Siggy, but uh, still got a whole boatload of points. Second place in the championship, not too bad of a start for Lona, but I get the feeling this round, possibly a little bit of damage control at this point, considering how fast the Ferraris are. Yeah, he's been very wily here. He's actually got in behind Kevin Siggy to <laughs> maybe get a little bit of a toe. Again, toe's not the, the biggest factor around this circuit, but it, it's definitely going to help him for sure. It's not going to be the quickest lap up because of how slow you came out the final corner. Uh, but just stick behind Siggy. Hope Siggy stays there for a couple of laps and maybe you can find something here. Uh, you can see the number one on the cart. That does indeed tell you that Moritz Lerner is our current champion. Uh, he was given a test drive in the DTM trophy last year and they loved him so much that they gave him a full season drive with media mark sponsoring the car media mark the major sponsor of not only dtm but the esports team as well within dtm so yeah fantastic to see him back here once again and it's one of those where he genuinely wants to be a real racing driver but he has not lost any hunger in terms of of wanting to still perform in sim racing no, he hasn't, and you're seeing that with a lot of drivers, actually. Uh, not just sim drivers going to the real world and trying to do things there, but real drivers um, coming into sim racing because they know they realize, re realize and recognize it as a legitimate discipline in the sports. It's, you know, it's a subsection of motorsports just like any other, um, if you ask me. And the, the, the more drivers, more real-life drivers that realize that the better um, because there are some perhaps uh, opportunities that they can go for in sim racing that they might not even get in the real world as well because the, the prize pools are certainly getting there. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Siggy, by the way, has gone faster at 49.779. And that is a time that I am not sure is going to be beaten here. He is currently seven hundredths of a second. And around a normal circuit, that's not a huge gap. But around here, that is massive. So seven hundredths of a second between him and Fiducci. Fiducci's been brilliant. Can he 
you know, finally get a decent race result. Uh, as now we've got six Ferraris there in your top six. Uh, we've got seven in your top eight. So the Ferrari definitely being the stronger car uh, today for sure. Jamba, Marco Fiducci there with a the number 46 there. Uh, probably a Valentino Rossi fan. I do love the Ford Zilla livery. I actually saw the new one for 2022 and I kind of prefer this one. This one's just very, very unique in its approach. Um, but yeah, as it stands, it's still Siggy. Pole position, Fiducci in second. Ottaviani is in third then for RHG. Uh, we then got Pinches for Arnage uh, Esports. He's in fourth position. And Hoogveld, another RHG driver in fifth position. Vermeulen then in sixth. Then got Pfeffer in seventh, Naj in eighth. We've got Keith Lee in ninth position. And then we've got Gassner in the top ten. We do. We ride on board with Gianmarco Fiducci, and that is a sign that Gianmarco likes to see. It's his favorite color. It's purple through sector one. Uh, so this is looking like it might end up being good. Like, careful with the walls, though. you got to be so, so careful. Otherwise, you're just going to ruin all your speed down the straight there. Still went the personal best through sector two as well. So this is looking like a fantastic lap for Gianmarco Fiducci. Just one more sector. And then potentially, he might be able to steal pole position away from Siggy. Yeah, absolutely. This could be a very quick time indeed. He needs to find 900s in the final sector. Across the line he goes. It's not going to be good enough, Ooh. but he's well, still going to stay in second position, isn't he? Uh, it's not quite uh, as impressive as what we first thought it might be. He's still got a couple of laps to go here. Um, and while we have got a couple of minutes to go here, guys, let me know where you're watching from around the world. On YouTube, uh, I'm keeping an eye on the YouTube chat and I'm keeping an eye on my chat as well. It's on my channel. Uh, so, yeah, good to see people watching on both. But let me know where you're watching from around the world. And, let me know if there's anyone in particular that you are supporting today. Uh, we're not far away from the actual real DTM season as well. That's going to be starting at the end of next month. And, oh boy, the grid is absolutely ridiculous. So, here we go. Kevin Siggy, as we come to expect, tends to be up and around it. Uh, he always seems to be able to qualify superbly well. And with his championship rival being down in P12 as it stands, Morris Lerner not having a good day here. Kevin Siggy with a massive opportunity, especially in race number one, to potentially make this championship very one-sided very early. Yeah, it is. And well, we'll get ourselves the end of qualifying. Just a couple of more moments to run down before the uh, standings get finalized here. But you can see Kevin Siggy taking a pole position. So taking the momentum out of the first week of competition into the second week here at the Norris Ring. Gianmarco Fiducci sharing at the front row with him. So, uh, yeah, 10 seconds left. We've got one car on track. Things are not likely to change. Take us through it. Yeah, there we go. Kevin Siggy, P1. Gianmarco Fiducci is in P2 for Redline and Ford Zilla, respectively. Virtual drivers by TX3. Christopher Hoogvelt is in third. I mentioned he was RHG. I can only apologize. It's T uh, no, he is RHG. Why does it say TX3? His, his car is RHG. He's got the team name TX3. Uh, then we've got Alessandro Ottaviani, who is also saying TX3, but I'm pretty sure he's RHG as well. And we've then got Adam Pinches. There is always a Hungarian. And in this case, in the top 10, there are two, because David Naj is also there as well. I think the biggest factor here is that Moritz Lerner, current champion of the DTM Esports, is only P12, whilst Kevin Siggy, who leads the championship by five points to him, is pole position. That is massive, isn't it, moving forward in this championship? Yep, it, it absolutely is. And, uh, well, these drivers will get themselves a little bit of a break before we go into race number one. But getting off to a good foot early on is, is always beneficial in a championship such as this, you know, especially when these guys are at their absolute top level coming into this one. They know how important this series is. They know how um, elusive the, uh, well, not elusive, but how Im incredible the prize is potentially to get themselves an opportunity to become a real life racing driver, which is what many of these guys would would have dreamed of but might not have been able to make happen for other reasons so th this is uh, for Siggy at least this is uh, just one step on a long journey there but he's just taken those first few and uh, well let's see where it goes from here well, we've referenced last time out a couple of weeks ago. And while well, we've got a little highlights package for you just to, I don't know, spice up those palettes of yours and let you know what you might be in for for tonight. So let's check out the highlights from rounds one and two. It is the DTM Esports 2022 race 
number one. There are 12 in total, and who is going to set their stall here? And Siggy gets them away as they cross the line. And I tell you what, it's a phenomenal start here from Ottaviani. The Der Esports team are in a little bit of trouble here as Lerner's actually up to P2 from P3. Krippner's going to drop back here, and can that BMW make a charge around the outside here of the Ferrari? Gets the overlap. Not quite going to work out here. Ottaviani, they're trying to hold on to P3, not able to do so. Down and towards turn number one, Siggy will hold that inside line here. Lerner maybe going for a fake. He's not going to be able to. He's got that side by side. A little bit of an overlap again. Siggy runs a little bit wide though, and the pressure really is on. Lerner oh. is he's on the inside, not quite going to be able to make that move. And I tell you what, Siggy is all over the place right now. And if he can force Pisco to make a mistake here, it could be well, it's going to be three wide here for sure. Ferrari decides to back out. That could have been uh, well, that was Dinya. So Dinya nearly. Oh, oh, that's a big spin. Big spin. He just gets the, on top of the curb there. He puts the power down too early as the car's unsettled as we still are on board then with Lerner and indeed Siggy. He is going to get that overlap once again here. And I think for the first time, he's got his nose just about ahead here. And I tell you what, this might be a move. It might be configured. It could be beautiful. Siggy though, still on that inside line. The BMW with that pace advantage as we come down in towards this very fast chicane before we head down into the hairpin. And it's done. He is our champion for the DTM Esports currently. And while race one of 2022's version is going to go to that number one car for Dura Esports, it's Moritz, Lerner, Siggy takes P2, Krippner P3, Ottaviani P4, Vermeulen takes fifth position. We've got Price, Fiducci, Hassa across the line. We're about to go. Kevin Siggy will take us away. Fiducci in second spot. It is two Ferraris then. And then it's the first of our BMWs. And it is Siggy that takes us away. He gets a very good start once again. And Ottaviani, very similarly to what we saw in race number one, and that number 74, is looking to potentially make it three wide. But he doesn't this time. But it's three wide behind. It's Marco Pejic and that number 14, that AMG, the white AMG on the inside, is looking to come through here. It is three wide. And I tell you what, fair play to Fiducci. He holds on to that position. Yep, I think the mathematics works out in the favour there as uh, we're running on board with Lona again, forcing Ottaviani to go defensive this time around. Commitment around the outside on the brakes by Moritz Lona. Oh, he's got him. The, oh, the tour oh. margin though. Out into the gravel goes Ottaviani. It's Moritz Lona, is he going to pull off a move on his teammate here? Is Hassa letting him go? Hassa has let him go. So a swap between the two door esports teammates there. That making an overtake, you need to have about half a second advantage. So you've got to force something, as we are seeing here, up towards the hairpin. And I think what uh, we're going to see here, potentially from Hassa, is that Moritz Lerner slows that Ferrari down. Speaking of worry, though, Fiducci's going to worry about that exit off the corner because he got a whole bunch of oversteer coming off. And now, oh, Hassa leads on him. Hassa half spins him. He's able to recover, though, is Fiducci. It's going to be a couple of lost positions. Yeah, uh, uh, th that's my point of view as well. And there's the response from Siggy. He immediately, on the lap after Hoogveld, he comes out down on towards the pit lane. And there is Morris Lerner leaving the pits here again. He's, he's on the pit limiter. As you can hear, Siggy's just gone past him. And it is going to be a fair chunk of change in terms of the lead. And uh, hopefully it's uh, another Ferrari to make it too wide uh, up his sleeve. But I don't think there is. And again, this is exactly what Lerner did in race one to win it. And he's gone and done exactly the same once again here. But Hoogveld keeps that nose in. It's not going to be enough. It's brilliant from Lerner and actually is he going to be close enough I don't think he is we saw him being able to outbreak Siggy quite significantly down into his turn number one last time round and this is how he did it in race number one he took the outside line he's already done it once today in this race and Siggy is not going to leave that room again here well takes the runoff uh, through, yeah, through uh, Piratella there the left hander the very fast left hander in the middle of the lap look at how close Lerner Lerner's overcommitted that loses him a bit of time and his last opportunity to get a move done on into turn number one is coming up Kevin Siggy went into the pits early. What a strategy call it was. The Team Redline driver is going to take victory here in race two of the DTM Esports 2022. It is second position for Moritz Lerner. So there you go. After two races, ladies and gentlemen, we indeed have Moritz Lerner and Kevin Siggy as your top two. Um, and well, it's uh, it's not going to be the same today, I don't think, because Moritz Lerner is only down in P12 in qualifying for race one, whereas Kevin Siggy's taken pole position. But here are your drivers. We've got Pinchez, Ottaviani, Dorniden, Dinya. We've got Vermeulen, Hugvelt, Naj, uh, Hassa, Fiducci, Price, Keithley, Siggy, Rudinger, Krippner, Witvert. We've got Wanner, uh, Rodriguez. Gassner, Payich, Markovic, then we've got Pfeiffer, uh, Rachel, Lerner, Pliska, Peringa, 
and Yashul as your 26 drivers that qualified through our qualifying process. But then there's three wildcards that qualified through the medium marked wildcard process, and that is Mosin, Bodin, and Fox. And you will see them in the medium marked red cars out there on circuit. Let's get our back onto the track then. They are gridding up. It's race number one. Oh, here we go. Race number one. It is time for a 15-minute sprint race. Predictions here. Is it going to be a Kevin Siggy show, or are we going to see a surprise here, Connery? Well, it's a hairpin for turn one, Luke. <laughs> uh, that is usually a pretty sketchy predicament. So for drivers that want to go greedy very early and trying to gain all the positions, then the absolute sends down the inside of that corner certainly available. We're not starting just yet, by the way, so don't uh, let's, let's not get excited too early here because these drivers will have to do themselves a formation lap. It's a rolling start here at the Norris Ring, same with every other track uh, this season. But as, as far as my predictions concerned, and if Fiducci gets himself a good start here, that opens up that inside for turn number one on Siggy. There's one thing that has never happened at the Norris ring, and that is controversy. We've never seen any controversy into turn one around this circuit uh, that may or may not have uh, aided the championship going <laughs> certain aware than where it maybe was going before. Um, maybe we'll see the same again to here today. Who knows? But it is Ferraris at the front then. Siggy, Fiducci, Hugvelt, Ottaviani. We've got Pinchez and Naj as your top six. There's always a Hungarian. Again, there's two of them in the top six. Then we've got Jack Keithley. He's the first of the, uh, the non-Ferrari gang. He is in the AMG. Can he spring a surprise, grab a couple of overtakes? He was actually our vice champion in the first DTM Esports Championship or the last DTM uh, Esports Championship as well. Uh, we've then got ourselves Markovic, the Montenegris uh, uh, driver. And then we've got Vermeulen and then we've got Pfeiffer in P10. Look at those German flags though. P10 all the way down to P20. Uh, just German flags all over the show. But it is all about Siggy then at versus Fiducci. We're about to go green light racing here then. So it's around about a 15 minute race around this circuit. That is about a sub 50 second lap. We're going to see a lot of laps here ladies and gentlemen. It is a sprint race. It is round three of the DTM Esports 2022. Kevin Siggy in that red car on the right side does take us away here. And it's a great start for the Ferrari driver. He's got to defend that inside line though. And just make sure he's in the lead going up to towards the first chicane. Two R8G cars then trying to go around the outside of the Fordzilla. There's an Arnage car. That's Pinchez, isn't it? The number 97 trying to make a move, trying to pinch a move up the inside. It's not going to work out here. He's going to end up going down to P4, but that is one improved position from where he started. But that was a dive of all dives. As I think a third, R sorry, no, it is the second R8G car trying to get through around the outside in the number 88. It's a brilliant move if he gets it done. And I'll tell you what, Ottaviani has stuck that round the outside. He just grazed the wall, and he absolutely makes that move stick on the Arnage car. Yeah, great little, great little move there from Ottaviani. And now Pin says has to continue to be looking behind here because Jack Heathley in the AMG Mercedes, the highest placed non-Ferrari, is uh, looking all over his rear. So that's the first lap complete here uh, of this race here at the Norris Ring. It, it only took about 50 seconds. Uh, but there we go as we look back towards uh, about for P2 because who Felt is trying to defend, uh, well, trying to get through on Viducci and does so. Yeah, and this is uh, kind of, you can play the team game here. Hookveld and Ottaviani, if Hookveld can sort of open the door enough to force Fiducci to make a move, but ultimately it's very difficult to, to, to make the move stick here and you lose a, a shed load of time, that could give Ottaviani a chance to get up into that top three. So uh, having two RHG cars in the top four as it stands makes things a bit more interesting for them. Uh, Arnage then, uh, Adam Pinches unfortunately down into P5 now after a very good first lap as there's a late dive here by Fiducci. And this is exactly what I was saying. And he has made that mistake here and I think you're fine. It is going to be side by side with RHG and the Ford Zilla car. The number 88 is going to have to go all the way around the outside. It's a long run up in towards turn number one. Uh, neither of them have got slipstream by the looks of things. And actually, no, you see the RHG car may have a little bit, but on a race ring, it's not the strongest of things. Uh, Fiducci then has that inside line, which means he should hold onto the position. Runs out a little bit too far wide, uh, but ultimately holds onto that position. Uh, you were talking about the uh, AMG of Keith for the yes, P6 right now, uh, already up a couple of spots here. That guy knows how to make overtakes, that is for sure. Uh, Yashul, P9. Uh, Florian Hassa is in P10. Um, so yeah, uh, people were talking in the chat about Yashul. He used to be quick. Oh, he's still quick. Look at him, P9 there. He's probably not in the... Uh, the meta car, if you like, for this circuit this week. Of course, they have to use the same car throughout the championship, but doing a very, very good job there in P9. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's just the ebb and flow of, 
esports racing throughout the years. There are some drivers that come to the forefront, some fall back, but you know there might be a time where Yarshell gets him ba himself back inside uh, podium positions. You know, it, it's uh, it's just how the way things work uh, here in esports racing. But uh, for Yarshell at the moment, uh, he's. Uh, in a quite comfortable position, like you said, considering that he perhaps might not have the fastest of cars uh, in terms of the manufacturer for the Norris ring. Uh, of course, we ha we're seeing a lot of the BMW struggle uh, at the moment. Highest placed uh, BMW uh, is uh, indeed for Hasse, and we've also got um, uh, Alexander Dornaden a little bit further down the order as well there in P13 in a BMW. We do have a Porsche in this race, albeit it's all the way at the very back. There's uh, Manuel Rodriguez. Um, in the lone Porsche in this event, and we also have a lone Audi, which is uh, Rappringer in P15. Yeah, Manu Rodriguez, arguably the most beautiful man in, in esports. It's a very close one between him and Enzo Benito, uh, but Manu is a, is a good-looking man, but he is a very, very good sim racer as well on multiple titles, not just uh, on race room. Actually, I would say race room is probably his weakest, if I'm honest, uh, yet still able to qualify for this field here. Anybody that's got into this field is exceptional it is really as simple as that um we've got some race room royalty watching right now in the youtube chat Benz banky how you doing Benz? welcome to the stream hopefully you're all well matey uh, and i'm sure we'll see you racing no time well no time at all it's going to be uh, you're in probably 760 different championships as we speak uh, but yeah good to see you watching uh, on here for the dtm esports 11 minutes 30 seconds ago it is siggy out in the lead by 2.1 seconds it's uh, not really close here no one's able to really put that pressure on took full advantage of the first lap all of the cars in behind him just messing around you know that they were just jostling for position and ultimately lost themselves a, such a significant amount of time that ultimately they we're not going to be anywhere near him, as we see here, Florian Hasser battling with Yasha. Yasha on the inside line of the AMG. Florian Hasser has actually left the door open here. Uh, then for another Ferrari, a Ferrari then trying to get himself up the order. Um, I think that's Whitford, right? Number P11. It is Whitford and Bermelen. Uh, the Dutchy versus the Belgian. It's a battle uh, that we will see for the, probably the entirety of this race. It is, again, very, very close here. Rudinger and Payet, by the way, are both out of this race. Uh, so not ideal for them. Not too sure what's happened to them. We didn't see anything. It looked like it's a re very, very clean start, like we've seen uh, for the most part of this championship. And actually, there's a mistake there from a Ferrari up front. Is that Markovic? No, it was Yashul. Um, no, Yashul's in a uh, AMG. Who was that? The number five there? It's uh, Nagy. David um, Nagy. It was Markovic. So yeah. Was it Nag Nagy? Uh, no, it's, it was Markovic that made the mistake. I think. Yeah, so it Markovic was. Markovic is the, the number five. So down, down in towards the hairpin they go. Markovic still trying to fight this out, fight out this battle after that uh, confusing situation at the front of this pack. I think we'll summarize that as uh, so they'll continue on door to door through the middle sector now. And Markovic, well, <laughs> he's certainly not giving this one up without a fight as they uh, head their way through onto what can be considered the uh, back straight. And uh, then we will get to see them come across the uh, in, into the final section in just a moment. But Nagy is also being concerned right now because he's got uh, pressure from behind. Is that, is that Yashel taking two positions yeah. in one corner? Ooh. No, he, he did take two positions in one corner, but then he very much gave them both back plus one. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> he ran very, very deep into the exit. So, yeah, he, he momentarily gained two spots, but it didn't last very long. Um, actually, Jack Keithley, by the way, down to P16 here. Uh, so he was involved in the incident, I think, with Naj, and he's now dropped right down the order. So P16 for him. As there's contact here, Matija Markovic trying to make a little move around the outside of the Hungarian. And by the looks of things, has it nicely sorted out. He has the inside line then through the next part of the track in the chicane here. And if Naj wants to get this move done or hold on to this position, he has to have the overlap on the exit of that chicane. I'm not sure he does. And he will have to go very, very deep under braking in towards his hairpin. And actually, to be fair, he has just about got half a car's length there. Late under braking. Yashul's gone for the dive once again. And Yashul nearly gets it stuck. But again, he's going to lose the position on the exit. Uh, this corner here, you can afford to dive during this race as it it's only 15 minutes long, but in the one hour race that's coming up, the tire wear will be huge on the exit of that corner. So, uh, yeah, we will not see that as often. Yeah, here comes another dive then. Florin Hass uh, gets the elbows out a little bit as well, forces Markovic out onto the wide line. 
and that allows Tim Yarshel to potentially come at him and slot in ahead of him, and he has. Markovic using the front bumper to just push his competitor along the circuit, and that's, uh, uh, well, there's been some crazy action over the last couple of laps in and amongst this pack because they're unable to settle their differences at the front of this, and just look at how much it stacked everyone up from behind. It's just a big, long train now uh, from P6 and back, uh, back to P15, I believe, uh, at the moment. So it's, it's a big pack now, and everyone's trying to improve positions because they know it's a sprint race. There's not a lot of time to run, and uh, they want to get as many points as possible. So, yeah, it's funny how these things uh, sort of uh, all um, uh, sort of link together in that aspect because these guys are losing a ton of time to P5 uh, at the moment. They're about four seconds down the road is Ottaviani. So that's how much time they lost just by scrapping in amongst each other. Yeah, 100%. Um, just again, we've got a comment about butchering people's names. That uh, I mean. if I'm saying it, <laughs> if I'm saying the name wrong, they have to tell their parents in a nicely worded email that they need to change how the names are pronounced. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but that's just how it works, I'm afraid. Uh, and unless someone's told me exactly how it's pronounced, what do you expect me to do? That is life, I'm afraid. When you become an adult, you'll realise that. Uh, around the final corner, we will go. And again, uh, Naj, I thought was what I thought was very, very. Um, well, interesting from him is on the previous lap, he had this kind of gap to the BMW and the AMG behind, but he still defended the inside line because he'd seen Yarshul dive up the inside so many times. So yeah, he's just trying to preserve his position right now. P6 is pretty good. Um, as we see, well, Dinya making a mistake there. I think Mark is trying to come back through after the mistakes he's made. Uh, where's Keith doing all this? He's still P16. And once you get into the, the rhythm of everybody else in a mid pack it becomes very difficult to make any kind of overtakes if you do try and size something up unfortunately um you just slow each other down right and you lose pace with the grouper ahead of you oh so, siggy uh, it always told oh, siggy's binned it that's got to be on his own here he was three seconds in the lead and he has made a huge mistake here then so the lead now goes to hookvelt we've got fiducci in second position now pinches is in third and siggy now is in fourth position so he has binned it there all on his own, has to be on his own for a fact that there's no one near him, unless there maybe could have been a back marker, but no, none of the back markers are 50 seconds behind. So that was on his own. And ultimately this has opened up this race hugely. Yeah, I mean, I was reserving the lap traffic conversation for the endurance race because I, I wasn't going to expect that we were going to encounter it. We still haven't, um, so thank you for alluding to that fact. But uh, but yeah, that's that's a very, very big, big mistake uh, from Kevin Siggy. And now race lead is blown wide open because Gian Marco Fiducci now feels the need that, oh, well, feels the possibility that he could potentially win this sprint race now. Adam Pence is in the picture as well. Siggy's not too far adrift off of these guys. He can potentially come back. And of course, right in the background we have Ottaviani. So it's basically a five car train for P number one inside the final five minutes of the sprint race. Yeah, Siggy's struggling for, for traction in those rear tyres getting powered down out of that final corner. Um, that is very obvious there because there was a gap that, that had come from the Arnage car between him and the, the Arnage car and the red line car um, just through that one corner. So I think he's really struggling for traction, which for us as commentators bodes pretty well for the, for the second race because they're going to have to very much manage that. Uh, but it is five Ferraris here battling for the lead of the race. Uh, you, you know that Siggy will still fancy his chances with five minutes remaining of this race to go out there and win it. As he makes a lunge up the inside then of Vinches. Vinches, it wasn't a case of... Yeah, he just ran wide there. He made a mistake, which is giving Siggy the podium position. And the last thing you want to do is give him any kind of opportunity. Don't help him. Like, he's good enough as it is. You don't help Siggy make overtakes. But yeah, Pinch has made a bit of a mistake there. But Fiducci and Hookveld have been able to drive away here. But Hookveld, the Swede, doing exceptionally well as we see a potential dive here from Ottaviani. And he is going to get it as well. And i tell you what, Pinch has, I think he's struggling for traction now in the rear tires as well. And, well, if they can't last 15 minutes, they're not going to last 30 or an hour later on. Yeah, this is a little bit worrying um, for that endurance race. Of course, there's a certain element of the drivers having a little bit more leeway to fight in the sprint race, considering they don't necessarily have to keep the tires in good check. But this is a very stop-go circuit, uh, Luke. You know, we got two hairpins. We have, you know, even this, even the middle sector corners of turn four, turn five. You know, coming out of turn five, you still need to apply that power down uh, from a slow speed to try and get the run down in towards turn number seven. So it's kind of expected uh, that the rear tires will would have a little bit more of a problem here. I just didn't expect that it would be this much compared to Imola as uh, people uh, decide to, well, snake their way at the rear coming out of these corners. Let's see if there's any, well, back end stepping out through the hairpin. No, not quite this time around. 
but under pressure, certainly something to be concerned about. There was a little bit from P1 and P3. I think um, Hoogveld and Siggy struggling ever so slightly. And you've got to do a lot more work with the car if you're in the lead, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So it makes sense that they would be struggling. Now he's led a couple of laps here and Siggy has led pretty much the, the entirety of the race uh, because you are just trying to break that toe, although Siggy done it pretty early in, in, in proceedings. But you know Hoogveld is absolutely trying his heart out here to, to build that gap. And he really has got the positive here that Siggy is in third position and actually putting pressure on Fiducci. We're looking from the rear wing of Fiducci. Uh, we saw that Siggy seems to be a little bit better under braking. It's just getting that power down. He's gone for the fake around the outside and then look for a little lunge up the inside. It's just going to be too tight there on the apex. Grabs too much curve. And you see the sparks flying up in the air. The car uh, didn't have all four wheels on the ground, which means you just can't get the power down uh, on the exit of the corner, uh, or at least both rear wheels. And ultimately, Fiducci is going to live to fight another day. Two and a half minutes to go here. Connery, it is Hoogvelt. This could be the surprise of the championship so far. Hoogvelt takes the lead. Yeah, he does. And, well, I, I was singing his praises last uh, last rounds, at least before the races, because uh, he's had a, a fantastic uh, race room esports season here in 2022 so far. And he has the chance, potentially, to convert that into a sprint race win uh, in the DTM Esports 2022. So continuing on that good run, but he's being challenged very, very closely here because, well, Fiducci's a big contender as well as Siggy, as he, Siggy tries to recover um, as many points from this race as possible. Is doing a good job so far. We are getting into the dying moments of the race, though, and it would be, for Siggy to win this, have to be two, two positions in quite quick succession, which is uh, hard for the best driver to do. But, yeah, it's... We'll, we'll keep an eye on this one, that's for sure. Yeah, as they round the final corner here for this lap, we've got two more to go once they cross the line. And really what Siggy needs to do is he needs to completely drain these two drivers of their tire wear. He needs to just keep pushing and keep pushing, force them to be on the absolute limit. Does not need a gap between P1 and P2, which means Hookbelt could just chill out in terms of getting on the power uh, and then hope that they make a mistake. But right now, it's Siggy that's thrown this away, hasn't it? He was three seconds in the lead in this race. He was about to take his second victory in our DTM Esports, but he's left the door open there as well. A bit of contact on the exit. Not of Viani. He fancies a little go here for that podium. Uh, so yeah, Siggy just struggling to get the car stopped now. As we come through the chicane, lovely onboard view here then with Ottaviani. Again, you've got to stay as close to those uh, Armco barriers as you possibly can without absolutely tagging them and taking half the car off as we now make the long run down in towards that final corner. We're onto the final lap uh, after this last left-hander, uh, and it will indeed come down to who has the bottle. Can Hoogbelt hang on? Uh, again, it looks like he was running a little bit deep in terms of entry into the corner, but that should help him on the power uh, on the exit of the corner. Fiducci looks like he's taken a completely different line. Uh, you can see that Siggy has got a phenomenal run here as they go across the line here. It is the final lap of today's sprint race. Remember, we do have a one-hour race to come, and it is indeed, as it stands, RHG in the lead here with Hoogvelt battling with Team Fordzilla is Siggy for Team Redline. Just sends his nose up the inside. They're not quite going to be able to make any potential moves stick. Hoogvelt then has got merely three corners to go to take his first victory ever in the DTM Esports. Through the chicane we come, and it's now all about making sure that you hit your mark in terms of braking. Make sure you do not slide that rear out on the exit of that final hairpin. We've got a great look here at Kevin Siggy. Siggy's surely going to make a dive. He does. He makes it side by side here. And is he going to run out too far off the apex? Well, there's contact then between Ot Ottaviani and Fiducci. Siggy does get up to P2. He was not involved in that incident whatsoever. He set up perfectly well. But the day belongs to Hookvelt. The Swede takes the victory here for RAG. It's Siggy that takes second spot, and that is damage limitation considering he was leading by three seconds and binned it all on his own accord. Fanucci takes P3, Ottaviani takes P4, and then we've got the Arnage Pink of Pinches that picks up P5. We've then got Naji in sixth position, Asa in seventh, Yarshul in eighth, Markovic in ninth, and Dinya rounds out your top ten. And it's all about the Swedish driver, Connery. Hookvelt has absolutely came here, taken his opportunity nicely that was presented to him, don't get me wrong, but he stuck to his guns, he drove the heart out of that Ferrari, and he takes victory here at the Norris Ring. He does. Two tenths of a second was the gap at the end. What an effort, though, for Siggy to recover from that one because it's so easy as a driver when you lose those positions due to a simple mistake. That's, that's what we think because there's no one around him when you, when you drop down the order like that. 
um, to get inside your own head and all of a sudden you're off your game. But no, Siggy came back and he got it onto P2, second step of the podium in the sprint race. Fiducci with a great podium as well, uh, with Ottaviani and Pinces rounding up the top five. And then, of course, you see the rest of the top ten uh, there. And then the second page results with Vitvo on the outside of the top ten uh, here today in the sprint race. Dornit and Pringer, Kripner, Bowden down to P15 with Keith Lee at Lona, 17th place. Not a great uh, finish for our second place in the championship coming into today with Price, Vimalian and Rachel running out the top 20. Yeah, there you go. And now we have the rest of our drivers. We've got uh, Pfeiffer, uh, Wanner, Mosin in 23rd. Fox, Rodriguez as your top 25. Then we've got Gassner as our 26th finisher. Pliska, Rudinger and Payich, unfortunately, did not manage to finish that race. And, you know, we're going to talk about Siggy because he will be our championship leader and he's managed to extend that championship lead, really, uh, considering he made that huge error. Just because Lerner, only P17, our current champion, nowhere to be found here at the Norris ring, uh, unfortunately for him. And, and how much pressure does that put on to him for race number two? It's absolutely huge. Um, it, it's uh, thankfully he has a few things working in his favour coming into the second race. You know, new starts. That's that's always very nice to have. New qualifying session. So the results from this race do not affect the grid for the next race. You know, the, unlike previous seasons or in different championships that you, you might think about here on race rooms. So another qualifying session means another chance to get himself a good time to finish a little bit further up the order. I think from Moritz Lona, if he can get sort of a, back around the sort of best of the rest. Um, area ahead of the well just behind the leading group of Ferraris then that would be a very very beneficial race for him and does recover a, a good sum of points at the end of the day like I said it was always going to be damage limitation for him but exact, it wasn't exactly successful in that first race Absolutely not. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's good to talk about those two. We'll tell you exactly why uh, very shortly. Uh, but today belongs to Christopher Hugvel. An incredible performance from him. Took full advantage of Siggy's mistake and just did not look back. But the reason why we're talking about Siggy and Moritz Lerner is because they led the championship coming into this. There's five points between them. And well, let's check out the highlights from rounds one and two before we head into qualifying for uh, race number four. Auto Hero ist dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. Oh, 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 oh,
Welcome back then, ladies and gentle cars. And well, if you thought the action was over, you were absolutely wrong because we have got ourselves qualifying number two. 10 minutes of qualifying for these drivers before we embark upon a full one hour race with a 30 minute pit window in the middle. So at 15 minutes, you'll see a red um, or a, a red square with a white circle in there. Once that disappears, uh, you know that they've taken their pit stop. So yeah, interesting to see how that goes down. Connery, after race number one, are you expecting a different approach from any of our drivers? There has to be, because we can't be having that uh, it, those extended side-by-side -side moments, at least early on in the race, here for this endurance race. It would be way too detrimental for so many drivers out there um, to, to get caught up in that sort of situation. However, if that does happen, then there might be some pit stop shenanigans that can be played, but that drivers can employ to try and avoid that situation entirely. Say if the, the pit window's just opening, opening and they're seeing a lot of fighting ahead of them, they can just dive down towards the pit lane, avoid most of it, hopefully come out in a little bit of a pocket and, uh, and, look, and try and get the undercut on all that slower traffic ahead of them. Basic motorsport stuff, it's worth explaining sometimes though, but yeah, I, I think, at least from my opinion, th this race has to be run a little bit differently from that sprint race. I think it has to be run in a little bit more of a calmer fashion, at least for that first stint. Second stint, you can go balls to the wall crazy as far as I care, but that first stint needs to be clean and consistent from everyone. Yeah, I think the pack are going to stay together a lot. Uh, a lot easier than they did. Well, we saw how close it was, 15 minute race we just saw. Um, especially the midfield, they're going to stay a lot closer for a lot longer during this race. So strategy is going to be absolutely key. Can you just get yourself out of traffic effectively and run some cool, clean laps on your own? You could maybe, I don't know, if you get four or five laps on your own here, you could probably jump five or six cars, right? Uh, yeah. Just because you're not battling with anybody, and you're taking the, the, the best line, if you like. So yeah, I think strategy is going to be a massive, massive call during this race. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're Kevin Siggy and you put it on pole position, uh, unless you make a mistake, of course, in chairs, by the way. Up to P2, again, a very good performance in race number one with a top five, but currently in second spot. The Ferrari is definitely the stronger of the cars today, uh, as they, well, I guess it's pretty even between them and the BMW last time out. Otto Viani then, who again had a lovely top five in race number one, is in third right now. Fiducci, who again had a top five in race number one, is in P4. But Keith Lee is up there in fifth position in the Mercedes. And it looks like ETM Esports champion, Morris Lerner, has found a little bit more here because now he is up to P7, although he's been put down into P7 uh, by Isaac Price. Yeah, so this is the task that I was talking about uh, before we went to the commercial break that, that Moritz Sloan needs to do. He needs to be best of the rest. He's around about there now, uh, albeit with two non-Ferraris ahead of him of Jack Keithley and Isaac Price. Uh, however, you know, uh, we know what Moritz Bologna's race pace is like. It, it, he tends to come alive a little bit more during races than compared to qualifying. So I don't think he's going to be too worried at the moment. He can certainly give Keith Lee and Price a, a run for their money when it comes to race pace and, of course, that all-important strategy as well. Uh, but there's still time left in this session to get things done. And, well, Lona's teammate, of Florian Hasse, actually, uh, again, demotes Lona down into eighth place now. So. Um, Again, he's got friends around him now as well, which certainly, certainly helps. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and that's kind of, you know, as much as it's not a team championship, we see this in a lots of championships like ESC, for instance, mm -hmm. something you're involved with, Connery, on, on, on the iRacing. There's not really a team championship, but ultimately team members will work together. That yeah. is the name of the game. So if you've got anyone to work with, uh, it does really, really help. Um, we've got Siggy here, who doesn't have anyone to help him, but at this stage, doesn't really need it. 49.8 and now a 49.7. So right now, he is two tenths clear of everybody. And just to put that into perspective, uh, the gap between P2 and P14 uh, is currently, well, no, P15 is currently the same as it is P1 to P2. That is ridiculous. Big surprise here. Hookfeld, winner from race number one, only P15, Connery. Yeah, that's, uh, well, Hookfeld needs to pull his finger out here. Well, he's got a good sector one uh, down in, so uh, it's best of everyone through that uh, first uh, couple of corners, uh, but he needs to hook it up for the next two sectors now. So maybe that was a little bit of a banker lap there from the Swede, personal best through sector two, so continuing to pick up the pace here. Uh, just uh, shy of uh, three quarters of a second down in sector two compared to what Siggy's time was. But now coming out of the final corner and across those grid spots, how far up the order can Christopher Hergfeld get our sprint race winner, P8, which uh, yeah. by his high standards is not too great. 
Yeah, but that's only what, just over one tenth of a second off of second. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's how close it is. Two minutes, 50 seconds. The last thing you want to be doing right now is chucking this car in the pits. I don't think you can really bring that car back out and challenge for pole position. So if you make a mistake, you're kind of done here. As Pinchez currently P3. But yeah, anybody, right, well, right now, the whole field, 28 drivers, is eight tenths of a second separating everybody right now. It is super, super close. Of course, we expect that is short circuit. It is as simple as that. Um, but this is going to be a frantic race. And remember, the tires seem to go off very, very quickly for uh, all of our drivers in race number one. It was only 15 minutes long. They've got to do, uh, well, if you're going to split it in half the next race, you've got to do 30 minutes on a set of tires, effectively. We saw last week that Siggy came in after 20 minutes to pit and did a 40 minute. <coughs> Excuse me, a 40 minute stint mm. on a set of tyres, and his car was pretty much dead uh, by the end of the race. So I just don't think it's possible here. I think everyone is going to have to pretty much do the same strategy. Is there the potential for people to do two pit stops? I don't think so, but you never know. Potentially, but uh, I mean, we, we, we never we never see it. So uh, it would be very, very unusual if we did. So still expecting just the one. But uh, Gianmarco Fiducci. Best through sector one and personal best sector two and three, still not enough to get up to where Kevin Siggy is. Still two tenths of a second behind Siggy's. I gotta say, Siggy's sector two time was absolutely monstrous. Uh, let's just say that. He's the. Um, everyone's pretty much doing 32 seconds through the, uh, th through the second sector. He's the only driver doing a 31. He did a 31 9 through the second sector. The um, uh, Fiducci's was a 31. Uh, 32 1. So there's about two tenths of a second there, just in the second sector alone. Yeah, absolute monster, isn't he? He's just good at everything he puts his hand to. Uh, it's it's just so rare to see someone so talented on multiple different sims in 2022. It really is. There are only sort of three or four, maybe. I, I He's got faster. Mention. He is purple, purple. <laughs> it's by a half a tenth here again. That's a massive, massive margin around this circuit. He is going to manage to cross the line here. He will not get any more attempts, but across the line we will go. He's got a bit of slipstream to work with. And he, do you know what? Did he back out of it yeah. completely? He did. Yeah. I don't think he. Yeah, I don't think he even wanted to go that much faster. Which is unless he absolutely bottled the final corner. Um, there's no reason to do that, but it doesn't matter. A 49.787, can't see anyone beating that. He is going to take pole position. We might see some changes between second down to 10th position. But as it stands, it's Gianmarco Fiducci. We've got Alessandro Ottaviani, Florian Hassa. Um, really good performance from yeah. Hassa there, getting that BMW up to P4. Uh, Pinchez, then uh, Axel uh, Vermeulen is in P6. We've then got Attila Dinya and Jack Keithley. He always has that cheesy grin. Uh, we've then got David Naji and indeed Isaac Price. Uh, Isaac Price, the most famous uh, leather jacket wearing sim racer in the world. Uh, Christopher Hookwell, P11. Mm -hmm. I think that's really disappointing considering you're off the back of a race victory in this field. You've, you've got to have all the confidence in the world, but unfortunately, it just hasn't worked out. We've then got uh, Rachel, uh, Alex Mosin, uh, first of the wild cards as well. Fair play to Alex. Then we've got Moritz Lerner, P14. He is going to be furious with his week this week. Uh, Mark Gassner. We've then got Leonard Krippner, uh, Matija Markovic, Jonas Wanner, Yashul uh, as your top 19. I just missed, I think it might be Bowden actually, who was in P. 20. We've got ourselves uh, just a quick little warm up here. And well, with this warm up, we are going to quickly head to the highlights from rounds number one and number two. So you can check out exactly why it is Morris Lerner and indeed Kevin Siggy leading us coming into this championship race today. It is the DTM Esports 2022 race number one. There are 12 in total, and who is going to set their stall here? And Siggy gets them away as they cross the line. And I tell you what, it's a phenomenal start here from Ottaviani. The Dur Esports team are in a little bit of trouble here as Lerner's actually up to P2 from P3. Krippner's going to drop back here. And can that BMW make a charge around the outside here of the Ferrari? Gets the overlap. Not quite going to work out here. Ottaviani, they're trying to hold on to P3. Not able to do so. Down and towards turn number one. Siggy will hold that inside line here. Lerner may be going for a fake. He's not going to be able to. He's got that side by side. A little bit of an overlap again. Siggy runs a little bit wide though. And the pressure really is on. Lerner is he's on the inside. Not quite going to be able to make that move. And I tell you what, Siggy is all over the place right now. And if he can force Pisco to make a mistake here, it could be, well, it's going to be three wide here for sure. Ferrari decides to back out. That could have been, uh, well, that was Dinya. So Dinya nearly. Oh, oh that's a big spin. Big spin. He just gets the, on top of the curve there. He puts the power down too early as the car's unsettled. 
as we still are on board then with Lerner and Indy Siggy. He is going to get that overlap once again here. And I think for the first time, he's got his nose just about ahead here. And I tell you what, this might be a move. It might be configured. It could be beautiful. Siggy, though, still on that inside line. The BMW with that pace advantage as we come down in towards this very fast chicane before we head down into the hairpin. And it's done. He is our champion for the DTM Esports currently. And well, race one of 2022's version is going to go to that number one car for Dura Esports. It's Moritz Lerner. Siggy takes P2. Kripner P3. Ottaviani P4. Vermeulen takes fifth position. We've got Price, Fiducci, Hassa. Across the line, we're about to go. Kevin Siggy will take us away. Fiducci in second spot. It is two Ferraris then. And then it's the first of our BMWs. And it is Siggy that takes us away. He gets a very good start once again. And Ottaviani, very similarly to what we saw in race number one, and that number 74, is looking to potentially make it three wide. But he doesn't this time. But it's three wide behind. As Marco Pejic and that number 14, that AMG, the white AMG on the inside, is looking to come through here. It is three wide. And I tell you what, fair play to Fiducci. He holds on to that position. Yep, I think the mathematics works out in the favour there as uh, we're running on board with Lona again, forcing Ottaviani to go defensive this time around. Commitment around the outside on the brakes by Moritz Lona. Oh, he's, he's got the, him. Oh, the tour margin oh. though. Out into the gravel goes Ottaviani. As Moritz Lona, is he going to pull off a move on his teammate here? Is Hassa letting him go? Hassa has let him go. So a swap between the two Dory Esports teammates there. That making an overtake, you need to have about half a second advantage. So you've got to force something, as we are seeing here, up towards the hairpin. And I think what uh, we're going to see here, potentially from Hassa, is that Moritz Lerner slows that Ferrari down. Speaking of worry, though, Fiducci's going to worry about that exit off the corner because he got a whole bunch of Oversteer coming off. And now, oh, Hassa leads on him. Hassa half spins him. He's able to recover, though, is Fiducci. It's going to be a couple of lost positions. Yeah, uh, uh, th that's my point of view as well. And there's the response from Siggy. He immediately, on the lap after Hoogfeld, he comes out down on towards the pit lane. And there is Morris Lerner leaving the pits here again. He's, he's on the pit limiter. As you can hear, Siggy's just gone past him. And it is going to be a fair chunk of change in terms of the lead. And uh, hopefully it's uh, another Ferrari to make it too wide uh, up his sleeve. But I don't think there is. And again, this is exactly what Lerner did in race one to win it. And he's gone and done exactly the same once again here. But Hoogfeld keeps that nose in. It's not going to be enough. It's brilliant from Lerner and actually is he going to be close enough I don't think he is we saw him being able to outbreak Siggy quite significantly down towards turn number one last time round and this is how he did it in race number one he took the outside line he's already done it once today in this race and Siggy is not going to leave that room again here well takes the runoff uh, through here yeah, through uh, Piratella there the left hander the very fast left hander in the middle of the lap look at how close Lerner Lerner's overcommitted that loses him a bit of time and his last opportunity to get a move done on into turn number one is coming up Kevin Siggy went into the pits early. What a strategy call it was. The Team Redline driver is going to take victory here in race two of the DTM Esports 2022. In his second position for Moritz Lerner. So welcome back then, ladies and gentle cars. That is the warm-up done. There was the highlights from race one and two. We've had race three today, uh, and now we head into round number four, race number four of the championship. It is a full one-hour long race here. There is a pit window, which they do have to serve a pit stop and change the tires. So they have to change all four tires, and uh, that will be between 15 minutes and 45. They've got 60 seconds to grid up. What are we expecting here, Connery? A, a bit of the same, or are you expecting to see a bit of a surprise result? More surprising than Hoogveld, I guess. Two laps are the same, like we saw in the sprint race. However, I'm hoping things calm down after that point. When it comes to second stint, though, uh, well, all belts bets are off with regards to that because the whole time, not, not only the strategy is going to be so important here today, it's the timing that you have coming down on towards the pit lane, coming out uh, free of traffic and avoiding traffic. Also, lap traffic is going to be a big factor as well, especially at the end of 60 minutes. That's what the leaders have to be concerned about here, uh, more than at every other, any other circuit on the calendar. I completely agree. It is going to be about track position, getting those pit stops in early. Um, you know, if you do come in early from the lead, are you likely to filter out into cars that maybe have had uh, a few mistakes happen to them as well? So you've got to factor that all in. If you feel comfortable, you just got to keep going, I think, and, and just play it by 
when your tyres decide to go off. But we are about to get a formation lap underway, and then we've got a full one-hour race. Uh, Fanas Grobler, welcome to the stream. He's from South Africa. Where are you all watching from then, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know in the chat. I'll give you a little shout out as well. Um, so yeah, here we go then. It is Siggy on pole position. Of course, he was pole position for race number one. He didn't win the race. He was clear by three seconds, but ultimately something that I have never seen from Kevin Siggy. And it was a mistake. He actually lost it out of the final corner. Looked like he got onto the power a little bit too early. Uh, we didn't exactly see what happened, but he was, he was nowhere near anybody. So it was uh, something he dropped on his own, uh, but ultimately, didn't go out and win the race, but it was Hookvelt that took advantage. Hookvelt in this race is only P11. Uh, big opportunity though for uh, Florian Hasser, who has very much overperformed considering uh, it seems like the Ferrari are the outstanding car here. Here we go then, in towards that final corner. It is the number 11 of Kevin Siggy in that Team Redline livery on that Ferrari and the Ford Zilla driver of Jan Marco Fiducci. He said he hates second place. Uh, finishes or hates qualifying second place again in the YouTube chat. Can he go one better here? It is round four of the DTM Esports 2022. Kevin Siggy for Team Redline takes us away here at the Norris Ring. One hour's worth of racing, one pit stop they have to serve, and we are green light racing, baby. And it's another fantastic start here then from Siggy as we head up towards turn number one. Expected to be a bit of a car park in towards turn number one. Some late dives potentially up the inside. Yes, there absolutely was. I think that was Naji again making a dive up the inside like he did his three wide between uh, him and TX3 car and indeed. I think it might be Pinchez. It is Pinchez who's in P5. He's in that pink car up the inside in that Arnage competition car. Uh, and ultimately, he's going to now leave that door wide open up the inside, but run out wide. A bit of contact, I think. Again, a very clean start. We saw a media mark car there sliding into the into the wall there like he was sliding in some DMs. Uh, but ultimately, <laughs> everyone gets through nice and cleanly. The front four are kind of nice and clear. I think the, the biggest win, really, is Florian Hasser. has not been mugged off at the start here. At the end of lap number two, he's still P4. Yeah, so important for that BMW, a quote-unquote out of position, but out of position in a good way, uh, which is not usually what we talk about with regards to the uh, regards to qualifying here. As we head down our way, our way down in towards turn number one for the second time in this event, as oh, has to get a whole bunch of uh, Ferrari in his back bumper there, as Adam Pinces goes deep on the brakes and trying to defend from Ali uh, uh, Attila Dinia in sixth place for the moment. It's a huge grouping of Ferrari, so accepting. Uh, Florian Hassa, it's a, it's a P1 through 8 Ferrari um, at the moment with, with the BMW just right in the middle of it. So if you needed more evidence as to which car is the strongest here today, I don't know what else to tell you. Well, it, I think uh, what Hassa, what the Ferraris have to realize is that Hassa is going to be very, very slow in a braking zone and through the mid corner. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why Pinchez wasn't able to make a move. And that's why we saw Naji drop down a position uh, as we are on board here with Attila Dinya, trying to, well, hold on to a position here, isn't he, actually? Uh, while trying to make a position up on Vermeulen. So Vermeulen there makes a mistake. He's going to run wide, uh, and ultimately, door left wide open. Then on the exit, the Belgian just about holds on. He will stay into P6. Dinya then in seventh. That's given the Hungarian Naji an opportunity to catch up. He's now P8. Yasha and Kiesli then, P9 and P10. A move then for Moritz Lerner. Moritz Lerner up to P11. So starting to make his way through the field by the looks of things. And, and ultimately, he, he has to. Uh, Siggy has not driven away like he did in the first race here, uh, Connery. I think he has taken uh, a little leaf out of your book. He's listening to you, which uh, no one ever does. Recommend, guys. Yeah, I don't really <laughs> recommend it, but he's he's listened to Connery here, and he's just taking his time. And I feel like the scare of the spin he had in race number one is a huge factor in that. Yeah, that, that will play in the mind a little bit. The best drivers, of course, are able to completely dis discard that, throw it out the window, and focus on the task at hand. Uh, but, of course, you still need to have moments like that to reflect on it and just learn from your mistakes. And that's what, you know, that's what that's probably Siggy's attitude towards this. It's like, okay, maybe I'll just uh, tone it down a little bit. If I'm, you know, with this margin ahead of Vidici, eight tenths of a second, that's still a comfortable margin for me because there's no or very little slipstream effect here. So it's not like Vidici is going to get a big toe down like down Imola, uh, for example, on the pit straight there. There's no straight like that here at the Norris ring. So therefore, he can just focus on his own thing, manage the gap, manage the tires, importantly, in this endurance race as well, and look forward to that checkered flag. So 
the, the calm start to this race really pays in Siggy's favor. He could have immediately launched into a battle for the race lead with Fiducci and, and those behind, but he didn't. He got a solid start, solid sector one, solid first couple of laps, and now Siggy's going to be very hard to beat here unless he makes another mistake. Yeah, 100%. We've got uh, one, two, three, then for the Ferraris. Then we've got interspersed between them. We have got Florian Hassa in that BMW. We've then got Pinches. Uh, we've got Vermeulen. Then we've got Dinya, Naji, uh, Yashu, and Keithley as your top 10. Lerner, uh, again, about nine tenths of a second actually off of that top 10. You see the chill blast there on the back of that Williams Esports car of Jack Keithley. Um, it's just not quite working out for Moritz Lerner. Moritz Lerner's, well, hold on. Lerner's dropped hugely back here. Where is he? He's, not, he's no longer in the list. He's P24. So Lerner now down to P24, he's dropped it somewhere. And I'm wondering whether there was some contact with someone, we missed it, uh, exactly what's happened. But around this circuit, this early in the race, if you you know make one little mistake, ultimately you're gonna drop down a huge, huge amount of places. You absolutely are. And this has been a day to forget for Morris Lerner. Unless he's able to pull off a stellar recovery from this point forward, it looks like. Uh, that is going to be a pittance of points for the driver that's second place in the championship coming into this uh, race day and of course our previous championship winner as well a little bit of fighting going on ahead of him raf pringer trying to hold off uh, alex moisten at the moment of course uh, pringer the only audi in your field here today and uh, well trying to mix it in but of course you know there's there's only so much you can do when you're not in the third car by a relatively large margin yeah, 100%. And again, it is top five in this championship that win the prize effectively. Top five will go to a sighting event uh, where they will be judged by DTM as to where... Oh, there's a medium-marked Ferrari uh, facing the wrong way there. Oh, don't do a recall. Connery was about to... <laughs> Connery was about to be absolutely furious there with Alex Mosin because that would have been a, a very poor rejoin. Well, any rejoin is a poor rejoin if you're not looking uh, left and right. Uh, ultimately, has not affected anyone else's race there, so Connery will not be finding out where you live to knock on your door and give you a big telling off. Uh, Florian Hassa under some severe pressure here from Pinchez in P5. Uh, looks like Vermeil has just dropped off ever so slightly. Uh, but yeah, just going back to the prize here, it, it's a sighting event. So one week during the DTM season, it's not been confirmed exactly which one it is yet. Um, but five, the top five drivers in the championship will go to a DTM event and they will be judged uh, over multiple different um, events. And they will pick who they feel is the, the most appropriate to be in the DTM Trophy for 2023 with a fully paid drive uh, in the DTM Trophy. So, uh, yeah, that is the prize. So, Lerner hasn't lost his chance, if you like. It's still a top five, but he wants that P1. He wants to win the championship because, obviously, there will be a DTM Esports champion. doesn't matter whether you're, you know, P1 or P5 for the prize, but only one person is going to become the DTM Esports champion. So, that may already be gone because it's been such a bad day for him. Uh, and Siggy, can, with Siggy have two poor races like we've seen from Lerner today? I don't think he's capable of it, to be completely honest. Uh, <laughs> be careful saying that, Luke. Be very, very careful, because Siggy's already made one mistake today, and there's a little bit of an error from Attila Dinia as well, going very, very wide through the final hairpin, and, uh, well, allowing uh, David Nagy as a challenger to head his way through, and, well, Dinia have, will have another opportunity to get back past him on the way in towards turn number one in this instance. And, well, in fact, does so. And Nagy, I think, let him go there. Maybe a little bit of a sportsman-like action going on back there as uh, the, the dives get sent in from behind. Jack Keithley, no! Oh, Jack Keithley gets tagged from behind. That was by Tim Yarshall. Yeah, Yarshall has um, basically kept his foot in there as yeah, he's yes. driven through the back of him and given him a little bit of a love tap. It's kind of, uh, yeah, I'm not sure Keithley was really... Um, Really hoping for a love tap there, but you know, here we are. Yashu moves up to P9 then in that AMG. Again, it's still a Ferrari Fest here at the front end of our game. 53 minutes left on the clock. Uh, the pits will open in around about eight minutes, so 45 minutes until 15 minutes left in the race. There'll be a pit window of 30 minutes long. Uh, they do have to come in and change their tires uh, during that stop. Florian Hassa under some severe pressure here from Adam Pinches, and Pinches just not deciding to dive here, and it's probably the best policy isn't it because ultimately we know the tires go off very very quickly especially with the ferrari by the looks of things uh, and that might be its downfall and we haven't really talked about that so first of all yeah you need to be careful here with the ferrari make sure that you are uh, once you make the overtake you've still got something left in the tank in terms of tire wear but maybe the ferraris are just really burning the tires out and that might be a fact in the the bmw's coming strong in the second half of each stint yeah, it, it could be the case. We, we saw a slight difference like that at Imola for our first round of the season, didn't we? Where the 
Um, the Ferraris also struggled a little bit as far as tyre performance towards the end of stints. Um, that will, of course, be exacerbated here uh, due to the nature of the circuit. Uh, you know, very, uh, uh, you have to lean on the tyres quite a bit, especially coming through those uh, uh, turn four and five in the middle sector. And of course, you have to light up the rears, so to speak, coming out of these slow speed corners as well. So. Yeah, that might be a worry for the Ferraris in particular because we have seen them fishtailing around a little bit more at the end of that sprint race compared to what the BMWs were doing. But I, I think time will tell in this situation because, of course, in that sprint race, we had the element of drivers pushing 110% since the drop of the green flag. Not so much here in the endurance race as drivers know that that strategy call is going to be so important. I did notice a, uh, um, uh, a chat on, on, on your... Uh, uh, well, your lovely stream here, uh, 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 Luke. That um, can you tell me about tire choices and upcoming pit stops, please? Well, we started that already. Uh, trying to work out if you are the Murray Walker of esports commentary. Who, who is the other guy, Crofty? Um, we're we're going to have to try and work out which uh, which, which commentator we're we're we're, we're most um, uh, trying to emulate, I suppose, Luke. <laughs> well, you're the eye candy, Connery. If we're going to be completely <laughs> honest, you're, you're you're here to boost the numbers in terms of people watching for your sex appeal. So, um, yeah, I, who the equivalent is in the real world of motorsport, I'm not too sure, uh, to be completely honest. And maybe you're, you're your own entity. Uh, I'm obviously only joking here, ladies and gentlemen. He's also here for his expertise within motorsport and sim racing. Um, I guess we're, we're, we're our own people. I don't think there's anyone that can, we can really be like. Firstly, because neither of us know what we're talking about. And all of the commentators in the real world do know what they're talking about. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what to say to that, to be completely honest with you. But, you know, here we are. We're still doing a job. We're trying anyway. Yeah, uh, we, we do, of course. Uh, it's, you know, we, we've been in this business for quite a while. I've been doing this since 2016. So it's been it's been a while, been a number of years, and I enjoy every single second of it. And, well, hopefully we'll get to enjoy a battle B4 between Hasser and Pinces soon, because Pinces is... Uh, Applying pressure to the back of the German, not going for any audacious moves just yet. He's just sitting there uh, trying to work out, um, well, trying to formulate a plan in his head to try and find out where he can get past Florian Hasser and 12 with a good run down in towards one of these heavy braking zones. Well, that might open up the opportunity and Pinch says does send it down the inside at the final hairpin and gets through on Hasser. There's a response potentially from Hasser in towards turn one hairpin though. I don't think Florian Hasser um was too worried about that. I think he let it happen, if I'm completely honest. Yeah. I think he's got a plan here of what he wants to do in this race, and he probably feels like that Ferrari's a little bit quicker. Can the Ferrari drag him along, maybe, towards that front three? I, I don't know. Uh, it's going to help with Ottaviani and Fiducci here battle for position with each other. That is for sure. Fordzilla versus RAG. Siggy's checked out two and a half seconds, but last time we said he was that far in the lead, he binned it. So, yeah, not and it's not a given what's going to happen in this race, that's for sure. Yeah, um, hopefully it's not deja vu uh, for Singy. Um, so, well, the rest of the field are hoping it's deja vu. That's for sure. Yeah, They're hoping that he he puts it over the wall. There's 28 other drivers that are hoping that it's deja vu uh, for Kevin Siggy at the moment, but uh, see, he, he seems to be going along well. I am touching wood here because, I mean, my desk is made of wood, so it's kind of hard for me not to touch it. But um, it's uh, for Siggy. Now he just needs to get to that, that, that first set, well, that first and only set of stops. There is one fourth scheduled stop here today. They do have to change the tyres as well. It's in the rule book. Uh, so once Siggy's gotten to that point, it should, should be clean, relatively clean sailing towards the end. Of course, uh, we, we do have that potential element a little bit later on of an increased problem with lap traffic than we're used to seeing because the tracks, uh, the lap time's so short. Yeah, 100 percent. It's um, it's it just really doesn't give you much in terms of strategy calls if you're in a bunch of cars really around a circuit such as this, because you're just so worried about losing so many positions. You know, if you if you want to make a bold statement, you can absolutely go for it. Uh, I feel like we will see a couple of people do that. It's very soon, two and a half minutes or just shy of three minutes left to go here before they have to start thinking about pit stops. Who will be the first driver to blink as we're on board here with Jonas Wanner, uh, Luciana Whitford then leading the way here. As you can see that blue and purple of the Banash Esports team livery. It's a pretty cool livery to look at, that's for sure. Um, and there's Wanner, he's gone for a fake maneuver around the outside and then opens something up up the inside. Hits the apex nicely. Oh, it initially hit the apex nicely. On the exit, didn't so much. And well, we know that there's going to be penalties uh, during this race. I feel like that is definitely going to be looked at. Uh, and the one driver that doesn't really care too much about that was Bodin. As we now see the AMG 
try and lunge there up the inside once again and it's Vanna. Uh, and Vanna, I think, might be in a little bit of trouble for that little exchange. Yeah, there are live stewards here, but they don't tend to give penalties in races. It's more of a post-race review sort of thing. As you see Bowden, well, he's looking to try and get two positions on one lap here, but he might lose the position he's already gained here as Vitvo is able to work his way back to the inside coming out of the final corner. So how does Bowden negotiate the situation now? Because he's going to be down on speed a little bit, or rather should be coming down the pit straight due to the... Uh, suboptimal line coming off the corner and so oh, Bowden just gets out of the way because here comes Moritz Lona. Is this three positions in one corner? Well, he's almost got two, but that was a he massive lunge. Yeah, he's got two there. Brilliantly done there. Bowden, I think, gave it up. And then this move on Vanna is, well, exceptionally done as well. And he almost got uh, Whitford as well. I think it will be a, only a moment of time. It looks like uh, Lerner's got some decent tyres underneath him here. I don't think he's going to be coming in early. I was just about to open up the discussion about that Moritz Lerner's well out of position here. Is it a case of get some fresh tyres on, get track position, and then just defend just defend crazily at the end of this race? I'm, I'm not sure his tyres are in, a, in bad enough shape to even warrant that now. Seems like he does have some pace uh, as well. drivers are coming into the pits as the pit window does indeed open. There you go, pit window is open. As you can see there is the red boxes next to their names. Uh, and you will see that go green now as Morris Lerner makes a move up the inside of turn number one, does not hit the apex there. Uh, just tags the Balash Esports the car. I'm not sure that will be uh, deemed as a, a, a penalty potential incident. I think it's just more of a racing incident there. Uh, but we've got Pfeiffer into the pits by the looks of things. It looks like the AMGs are coming in. There's an Audi in the pits as well. Uh, and that's not ideal. If you're looking at the cars that have come in, they're, they're the anomalies. They're the cars that aren't really there in terms of raw pace, but also they're having to come into the pits really, really early as well. So, yeah, not ideal for Payet, Schaefer, uh, Pliska, and indeed the Audi there. I'm not too sure who is in the Audi in 29th position. Um, but there you go. You can see next to the names now, they're going green at the bottom of your screen, which means that they have indeed successful in their mandatory pit stop. Yeah, so easy to keep track of things here as uh, Dinier heads uh, his way down towards the pit lane as well. I do like the new pit, pit graphic. Um, it's it's very useful to have on our old overlay. It was kind of hard to tell who was down on towards the pit lane because uh, it gave you no notification. But you do now, you can see that green uh, pit notification. And then, of course, that uh, circle on the right-hand side saying that they've come down on towards the pit lane. And successfully completed their stops, like you quite helpfully explained there, Luke. So that's just uh, another little element to, to help you keep track of what's going on here. No one from major positions has come down on towards the pit lane just yet. I mean, I, I guess you could technically count in here as, as a mid-pack runner that has come down in uh, but everyone else though deciding that the early stop is not the call at the moment i have to wonder for the front guys they, it, it might put them in a bit too much danger of, of putting them back in traffic after their pit stop which is why they're trying to let this race extend a little bit more rather the stint extend a little bit more and then find a place to slot in uh, and, and get a couple of out laps under your belt before you actually encounter any traffic but that's dangerous because the cars behind, with fresh rubber, they're absolutely going to be faster. Um, it doesn't, you know, the, the grid, the difference between them and qualify was seven tenths across the whole field. So they're absolutely going to be faster for, you know, a good five to ten laps, you would say, uh, at the very least. Does that open up the option here for oh, them to why. jump, a, you know, 10, 15 cars? I don't think you want to put it to chance. Of course, you know, I think track position is key here. You can defend around this circuit. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. And we see in, in DTM, we see in Formula One, we see in all sorts of, of formulas out there or, or racing series out there, that as soon as one person comes in from a, a certain area on circuit, it's a domino effect, isn't it? It just triggers everyone else. So I think if someone from the mid-pack now comes in or one of the leaders comes in, I think you'll see everybody else follow suit. I mean, you can also have team members uh, sort of w working in the background, not on the track helping you, but uh, sort of in your ears uh, on your Discord or TeamSpeak or insert uh, chat service of choice here. Um, it's just trying to help you out as a sort of your, your own team boss, your uh, own spotter to try and keep track of what's going on with everyone else out there on circuit and to I'll give you the data uh, to be able to make the best core possible when it comes to the strategy. Gone are the days, for the most part, at the top level of sim racing where it's just the solo driver trying to manage their own race. They, they do have a team of people, a lot of these drivers, behind the scenes uh, making sure uh, that, uh, that, one, they're on the right strategy and two, you know, just running all the options and and telling drive okay the guy ahead of you is you know a couple of tenths of a second slower through this sector see if you can do anything there's a, there's a whole data driven element behind these races uh, a, a lot of the time at the top level of sim racing now 
Yeah, 100 percent. Again, we talk about the team. Some of these drivers have multiple team uh, drivers in the same race here, but it's not just that. It's uh, it, you know engineers, managers outside, uh, you know, in their ear right now. They'll be getting every bit of information they possibly can. They'll be looking at the data as well uh, via the reality tool on race room. Uh, as we watch Jonas Vanner here being overtaken by uh, Florian Odin. So Odin there makes that move in that medium marked car. Medium marked cars are the wild cars. There's three of them in this championship. They all qualify via a separate event. It was held at the Nürburgring uh, earlier on this year. Media Markt, of course, one of the major sponsors of DTM and indeed uh, the title sponsor of the DTM Esports Championship, uh, also sponsoring those three cars, so really good to see. They also are sponsor of Moritz Lerner uh, and his DTM trophy journey so far. Um, we just had a question, is there any rivalries to watch yeah. out? Well, really the biggest <laughs> rivalry early in this race or championship is Kevin Siggy versus Moritz Lerner. Moritz Lerner, our current champion from last year, or, or the year before, I should say, um, and Siggy, they were five points separating them, both of them going into today. Uh, but unfortunately, Lerner's just had a terrible day. He's in P16 right now. He did not finish well in race number one either. Siggy got a P2, and he's currently leading in race number two here today. So, yeah, the rivalry has kind of um, gone out the window. Ottaviani, uh, who's in second spot for Ducci, who's in third right now. Pinches, we're, we're used to seeing them in amongst it here. But Siggy, if he gets a race win, it's almost going to become a very difficult championship for anybody else to win. And we knew seeing his name in his championship anyway it was going to be difficult to beat Kevin Siggy because he is just an absolute um, worldie in terms of a sim racer and yeah he's just proving that point here once again it's like uh, Vanna is a DNF then down the bottom of our screens uh, Florian Hassa him battling with Pinchez it's almost like they're leapfrogging each other at this point uh, he's currently in P5 and it's very clear now that people are waiting for that halfway mark here just get to the halfway point and make sure that Tires are going to be half decently fresh at the end of the race. People like uh, Dinya Faifa, um, who else have we got here? Uh, Payic Pliska. Uh, I can't remember who's in P26 right now. If you can go on board, that'd be great. Yeah, Pringer uh, in P26. These drivers, again, they may be able to get some sort of track position in this, but they are going to be so struggling by the end of this race. Uh, although it looks like they're unlapping themselves here uh, on the Veloce driver there of Marco Payic. Where's Payic in this race? Uh, as it stands, Payich. Well, no, that, that's for position. The Payich then has pit. He's in P25. So they're all battling for positions right now. The AMG is not looking overly too strong today. Yeah, I mean, none of these cars that have pitted already looking overly strong at the moment. Um, it, even though they've come down on towards the pit lane and got themselves in the fresher tires, it seems like uh, they're still a little bit stuck back here. They're not gaining too much ground over the rest of the mid pack. Uh, we'll still have to wait and see how it how it turns out. And of course, you know, yeah, you have the element here. You can see on the left hand side of the timing screen. If you do pit here, you actually automatically just go a lap down. Uh, that's how long that you're you're spending on yeah. uh, pit lane here. So you, you have to be careful about that as well, because if you come out, uh, then sort of in the same region as the leaders are going through, you're going to have to lose time potentially giving up the position if you're not able to pull away uh, due to blue flags. So it's. Uh, yeah. 100%. Never, it, it, again, I, I, I do love these short circuits for that reason, because you get all these weird, interesting situations which you, you might not consider uh, at some other circuits. 100%. Uh, Ben's Banky here saying he believes tire deck is not a huge factor here. I'm in the same camp as you, Benz. I was last week at Imola as well, or two weeks ago in Imola. We figured it was not going to be a big issue. It, w it was a massive issue. It really was. Like, we didn't expect it to be. Um, but here we are. We saw Siggy really struggling in race one today. Uh, the eight-minute mark, he binned it from the lead. He was three seconds in the lead. And then he just looked like he could not get the power down on the exits of the two hairpins. Uh, so, yeah, it, it definitely is a factor, especially for the Ferraris, by the looks of things. Um, and we saw this at Imola as well last week. Uh, Moritz Lerner was nine seconds behind. Siggy, Siggy picked 10 minutes earlier uh, at Imola last time round and Lerner caught up that nine seconds. So yeah, tire wear, for, it really is a huge factor. It, it shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see the exact results of it because we, we do have relatively limited information to be able to do that. So we got drive-through penalty, Leon Rudiger oh, yeah. for speeding in the pit lane. That's not the way things should be done. It looks like it was coming off of pit lane as well as he goes to the outside of turn number one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we always get at least one, don't we? Yeah, it's um, it's easily done. <laughs> but, um, if you haven't sped in the pit lane before, you have not tried hard enough, I guess. Um, yeah, I've done it. I'm sure you've done it, Connery. Uh, talk about them. Winner from race number one today. Round number three of the DTM Esports Championship 2022 is into the pits, and he stops there perfectly well. Uh, he stopped from what was around about 12th position. 
Currently already down to 18th spot here again. He's going to drop right behind uh, a shed load of cars here. And actually, it might be interesting to see where Dinya is on circuit right now. He's currently in P20. So where is Attila Dinya right now on circuit? There he is. So he is coming down in towards the chicane. Uh, no, he's out of the chicane. He's coming in towards that final corner. But he's the lead car of the pitted drivers. So if we go on board with Hookvelt here and see if he's coming out of the pits. Yeah, here he is. So it's going to be between him and Dinya. And has coming into the pits here for Dinya. Proved to be a worthy. Yes, it has. I think he's going to get him here. He will be up to speed a bit quicker. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very, very tight. And you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen, there he is. There is Hookvelt. He loses out then. A couple of spots here. He's going to lose out to Dinya. And I think he might lose out to... Has he lost up to Price? No, he hasn't. Price is a little bit further back. So he only lost one spot. Uh, but ultimately, it does seem that Dinya coming in early here it has paid off dividends. Yes, yeah, traffic on a different lap there as Hookvelt, <laughs> regardless of that fact, uh, decides to squeeze his way down the inside. That's Markovic, by the way, in the Ferrari. Uh, P11, but the it's not a battle for position out there on circuit. It's, it's just a lap difference between the two of them there. So, uh, so yeah, Hookvelt keeping himself ahead. I mean, as long as he's able to pull away, he's, he's well within his rights to uh, try and remain on the... Uh, on his lap here uh, so, and not have to surrender the position uh, to Markovic and it looks like he is pulling away just a little bit uh, at least coming out of the final corner is able to carry all that speed uh, in towards turn number one but of course he wants to he's sort of looking all over the place at the moment and now committing to the outside of Keithley as Keithley was slow into turn one yeah and you know he's going to be faster he's got the fresher tyres tyres are king right now in this situation of the race but it's one of those you're going to be told you've got a faster car behind you the whole time so if you don't pull away you feel like you probably should have to give the position up so it's a bit of a double-edged sword here and basically what you're hoping for in this situation is that they just come into the pits just get into the pits do your pit stop so i don't have to worry about you uh, in my rear view mirror again as you said pretty much guaranteed to go a lap down around this circuit just because it's so short it's only 50 second lap just under a 50 second lap here as we are on board then with pinches him and hassa have battled it out for the entirety of this race. Who's going to blink first in this battle for a top four? Uh, they're about five seconds or six seconds adrift of Fiducci and Ottaviani. Ottaviani and Fiducci, by the way, are half a second apart as well. They are very, very close, battling for that second and indeed third. Siggy checked out five seconds in the lead. And if I'm Fiducci right now, you're clearly being held up, I would say, because you're that close behind Ottaviani and have been for 26 minutes. Come in, get yourself in that pits now. Could you potentially catch up to Siggy? Um, I'm sure you've got the last lap data of Kevin Siggy. What was the last laps of Siggy, Ottaviani, and Fiducci? Um, I don't know whether you've actually got that or not. I, I, I do, and it's not looking good for Ottaviani or Fiducci because the last lap for Siggy was a 50.292, so running at 50.3. The last lap for Ottaviani was a, a 50.55, and the last lap for Fiducci was a 50.4. So it's and what's the fastest lap of the race? Uh, fastest lap of the race, uh, I don't have it easily to hand, but I think it is Kevin Siggy's 50.265. Oh, okay, so it's not really a huge difference between the fastest lap and what they're currently lapping right now, to yeah. be honest. Um, that, that will be because of the heavy fuel that they've got on board, of course. But yeah, I think if you're Ottaviani and Fiducci, you've got such a big gap to P4. If you want to go out there and potentially try and win this race, you've got to take a chance, right? You've got to come in early and just try something. Um, or you, if you're happy to settle for P3, absolutely do this, you know, because P3 at this level of esports is absolutely ridiculous. Like just qualifying for this is is crazy. So yeah, to get a podium is exceptional stuff there. Uh, Pinches just not really closing in with Hassa uh, battling ferociously there. Dinya is still the lead car, by the way, out of everyone that's pit. Rashel comes out, Keithley comes out behind him as well. Hookvelt um, is, I think he's been split by Keithley here. Keithley split. Dinya and Hookvelt. So Hookvelt came out behind Keithley uh, in terms of the battle we were seeing on a track. Um, but in terms, he was like a lap behind, right? And he's also come out behind him for position as well uh, once Keithley did pit. So that's quite an interesting little fact there for you. But Dinya, he's looking good. That early pit yeah. stop may pay off dividends. He's going to be slow towards the end of this race. We know he's going to be very, very slow here. How high and how many track positions has he gained? Yeah, so uh, with tire deck pretty low it might become uh, less of an issue for Atelier Dinier at the end of this race at least um, of course we're, we're judging that based on the fact of uh, how well Siggy's able to keep his tires in the correct condition but he's been in in basically ideal racing conditions at the very front of the field he's had yeah. no one to fight with no one to use his tires up on trying to attack but the fact Ben said that 
he reckons the tyre tire deck is not going to be a huge yeah. factor here. He knows far more the, about race room and the tyre degradation of the cars in, uh, within this game than I do. So I would absolutely take his word over mine, uh, 100%. I'm just going off of what we saw at Imola um, and what we saw from Siggy in race number one. So if it's not going to be a huge factor here, Dinya might be in a massive spot as Fiducci comes into the pits then. So Fiducci has come down the pit lane. He, Dinya is a whole lap behind, by the way, plus what he's got to catch up across the lines. So he, he won't catch up to this far up the field, but I don't think he's going to be too far behind. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So Fiducci, let's keep an eye on Dinya and Fiducci. So see where Dinya is on track and we'll check out where Fiducci comes out and just see whether Dinya manages to be in and amongst that battle. If he's within five seconds, for instance, of the, uh, of uh, Fiducci, we know that he's got Hasser and, and Naji. So, that, or, or sorry, uh, Hasser and Pinches. So it could be an opportunity for him to jump up towards that top four, top five. Yeah, it could be. Um, Dini, like you said, Dini has played a blinder at the moment. Um, I, I think a lot of his game time is less due to the fresher rubber and more due to the fact that he had some, well, he was able to basically run his own race after coming down in early and uh, uh, and everyone else was kind of just stuck in traffic a little bit more. Um, but, yeah. but, yeah, we'll just have to let's see how that Fiducci's works out. out. Yeah, Fiducci's out and, and quite a bit ahead. Oh, massive. Yeah, quite a bit ahead. Yeah, so that's, what, 10 seconds? Although he's made a mistake there. Um, Dinya is now up to speed. So he's right behind Fiducci. And the gap is, what is it, about 10 seconds? So Dinya's going to be behind P4, P4 and P5. So... Um, yeah, I think Dinya's played a blinder here, by the way, coming in early. As we see here, Christopher Hookvelt under a lot of pressure uh, from Tim Yarshall. Yarshall and Rashall also involved here as well. The two, uh, two AMGs uh, just making a little bit of a fight of this. And towards that chicane, they will come. Uh, and yeah, that RAG uh, esports car of Christopher Hookvelt is under some severe pressure. Uh, and also a race winner. He won the sprint race earlier on today. Uh, so very surprising to see him down where he is to be completely honest he's not had the best of race number twos here i'm sure he didn't qualify well uh, but he does indeed have that backup on that race yeah he does so it uh, doesn't panic um <laughs> with regards to that uh, that's for sure but well let's see we're, 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 we're at the halfway point of this race now so this is the exact midway point so if drivers want to split evenly 50 50 they'll want to come down here pretty soon but we are expecting to see a lot of, oh no, what's happened? A little bit of a tangle there coming off for the first turn. Uh, Yarshall getting right into the back of Herkfeld. Herkfeld's gonna lose that position and now Rashall's gonna gain uh, the spots as a result. Or is he? He's trying to fight door to door for them. Yeah, he's got it around the outside, perfectly done there by Rashall. Takes full, full advantage of the contact that there was between uh, Yarshall and indeed Hookvelt. Hookvelt was an innocent bystander there. He may have just been sloppy on the exit of the corner. So I tell you what, he's now being sent by two AMGs again, and it is the assault of the AMGs as it stands. And yeah, Rashall just about holds on, but Yarshall now through as well. As we see Ottaviani into the pits, we also see Moritz Lerner from P7 into the pits here. As we're on board then with Christopher Hookvelt, a lovely. Uh, on board view here as he gets to the right hand side of the circuit very quick uh, well a lot quicker than the uh, two amgs just to set himself up for this left hander uh, but again he's not quite gonna be able to get that traction down this is gonna hurt him later on in this race uh, you've got Kripna and gasner two bmws just in behind as well through that chicane through the mid part of this circuit we will go again side by side almost door banging them between the two amgs and uh, yeah, it is Yashu and Rashal that do indeed hold on P14 and P15. Hookvelt just drops down even further. And you've got to be gutted here as the leader of the race brings that car in. Ottaviani and Fiducci, of course, they have already pit. They were P2 and P3. I think Siggy should come out very, very much in the lead. It's about 5.5 seconds, maybe six seconds the advantage that indeed Siggy had over P2 and P3 so it'd be interesting to see whether they've maybe gained a little bit because they came in early as we see some frantic action look at this <laughs> crazy stuff going down here as Rashall's going to miss the apex run wide and I tell you what Hookvelt saying thank you very much and now he causes the contact there with Yarshall it's almost like yeah you've tagged me and taken me out I'm going to give you a bit of afters as well two wrongs don't make a right and uh, yeah they are 100% going to uh looking at a steward's inquiry for sure uh things uh, uh well this is more like uh <laughs> with more like touring car action than than than, um, than gt3s which is the category in use here in the gtm uh in the, GT uh, in the dtm not the gtm what i'm talking about oh, oh! rush has gone around oh on his own. yeah i was wondering whether you tap behind and oh i'm gonna say it luke 
what an awful retry as Vitvoke came into that one and had nowhere to go. And they're continuing to rub doors down the pit straight. Oh, my. Russell expect a very strongly worded email from Connery Maddock. He <laughs> hates rejoins like that. As we see a Ferrari and BMW doing things that I didn't expect to be seeing uh, during this broadcast today. So, yeah, well, that's, that's, uh, that's before the watershed, whatever that's going on right there. Um, let's go and check out Siggy. How far is Siggy ahead of Ottaviani and Fiducci? Oh, boy, it's eight Not seconds. Bad. Yeah, he absolutely nailed it. His pit stop phase has been nailed here. Ottaviani, oh, he came out just ahead of Fiducci here. They are close, man. Yeah, look at this. It's that close. They're actually battling full position. And I tell you what, it's going to be a no-one home moment there for Ottaviani. He tried to go deep under braking. But I tell you what, he's got the inside lane for the chicane here. It's all about whether Fiducci can just keep that overlap. Ottaviani will squeeze him out wide. It's very hard to go through here side by side if the, uh, the car in front is more aggressive. And I tell you what, that is a big old slide on the exit of there as well. And this battle has been going on pretty much for the entirety of this race. And it's absolutely going to continue for the next 26 minutes. We see a potential late dive here from the Ford Zilla driver. It is going to be the move made there, but on the exit, I'm not sure he's quite got the traction. The long run will be side by side as they cross the line here. It is still Ottaviani in the number 88 in the lead. Fiducci trying his best. He will have the outside line though for the next corner as the RHG car just absolutely disappears off our screens uh, as we head up then towards turn number one. Grabs the apex there, does Ottaviani, and well, he can take a sigh of relief. He can breathe now, and now it's just all about just staying in that position, just chilling out uh, and, and waiting for a couple of laps here. Uh, if you're Fiducci, you're going to try and put that move on as soon as you possibly can because Ottaviani does look very sketchy through that chicane especially. Yeah, it does, even, even on the... Uh even on the, well, the, the, the second stint tyres, uh, shall we say. Uh, of course, it does take a little bit of time for these to come up to temperatures after coming in and getting them changed in the pit stop. But, well, Dawn uh, Bottigliani looking to try and pull away. Our last uh, pit stopper, though, has come down on towards the pit lane. So Alexander Dawn then deciding that, uh, well, the very last opportunity to come down in is his. So he'll drop, be dropping down the order and everyone will be... Uh, in representative positions, and everyone will uh, be on on the uh, on the leading lap as well, as everyone has now come down in, and uh, all that sorts itself out. Kevin Siggy with an eight and a half second advantage now, back to uh, back to second place. So, yeah, it's it's been the Siggy show here today. The Slovenian, uh, certainly the. the just head and shoulders above the rest, and everyone else. Well, has to scrap out for P2, and that's Ottaviani and Fiducci, the two Italians. Yeah, I want to do a little shout out to Dornadon, Alexander Dornadon. If there is an open championship where you get to qualify via time trials or there's events where you can just sign up and get yourself involved, you're normally going to see an Alexander Dornadon in the finals. That guy is just relentless, a very, very talented sim racer and a really nice chap to boot. Um, good to see him involved here, not quite getting the results he probably wants, uh, but ultimately to, again, qualify for yet another major finals in his sim racing career he will when it's all said and done he will go down as one of the very best to ever do it that is a fact there he is a phenomenal driver across multiple different sims as there are a few of those kind of drivers in this field but it is the battle here for p2 that we're on board with right now Otto Viani versus Fiducci it is Italy versus Italy Ferrari versus Ferrari RAG versus team for Zilla, both relatively new teams, I would say, to the sim racing scene. Ford Zilla have been around a couple of years, whereas RHG kind of came into prominence last year. Um, and they kind of do tend to find themselves in very similar positions on track in terms of the talent. The talent, all they both have, are very similar. Kind of. Yeah, I think so too. Of course, uh, Ford Zilla, I think, stronger in, in race room than a lot of the other sims, as we see Fiducci. Uh, again, have a big old attempt around the outside, looking for the cut back of the corner, but you can see how much both of those Ferraris were sliding coming off, still struggling with the traction. We've still got 23 minutes of this race left to go, so I hope they're managing those uh, rear tyre temperatures there. Uh, but yeah, you're, you are right though. Um, Fordzilla and uh, Team RHG Esports, of course, you, you can't say RHG Esports without mentioning that they're a part of uh, Roman Grosjean's whole esports initiative stuff. So um, I guess I'll just have to slot that in there and get it over with. But yeah, the, certainly teams like this came to the forefront during 2020 when we know everything that uh, happened uh, during that year. And of course, continues to happen, unfortunately, in some parts of the world. And uh, well, it's. Um, uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it was certainly op an opportunity for sim racing to shine and for, to get more eyeballs off on what we do. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. A lot of a lot of motorsport names or uh, brands have, have got involved with sim racing, which is always good to see. Um, talking of temperatures, Isaac Price down in P23, racing in his leather jacket, no doubt, will be wetter than an otter's pocket, as there's a little bit of door banging there from Ottaviani. And Ottaviani just doesn't look very comfortable here with Fiducci right behind him, if I'm completely honest. I think uh, he's doing his very best here, as there's the move being made by Fiducci. Fiducci sends it, but I'm not sure he's going to get the traction on the exit. It's so difficult to get the power down on the exit of that corner, he will ultimately have the outside line going into the next uh, corner as well, although he's actually just falling completely behind. So it is a long 21 and a half minutes here for the RHG driver of Ottaviani. He's trying to find the inside line, it's Fellucci. He has found that inside line. Can he hit the apex? He can't. That is, well, yeah. He, I don't think you uh, I don't think you need to be a motorsport specialist to realize that wasn't very good. He hit the other car harder than he hit the apex there, um, which is not yep. the way you should negotiate a corner. But either way, it is Fiducci P2. Uh, Ottaviani P3, certainly no love lost between the two compatriots um, for P2 Give it back, man. P3 like, in this I, race. I, I, hate to, I don't want to cut you off, Connery, but like, come on, you're both Italians, you're both driving the Ferraris. <laughs> like, we've seen an incredible battle from you guys for 40 minutes. Give it back. Just give the position back. Do you, if you feel like you've got a pace, you'll get a position, because ultimately I feel like that will be a penalty. That'll be an absolute nailed on penalty, if I'm honest. Um, but he's got into the position, and I guess it's taken him that long to get an opportunity that he's probably yeah, probably. I mean, we, we kind of run a similar rule in this series that you never know whether you need to hand it back until the end of the race, whether you get penalized, when you get penalized for it or not. And, you know, it's kind of, yeah, similar rule to what they've now implemented in F1, which has been a very long time coming, along with other rules that they've also uh, implemented uh, for this season as well, with regards to track limits and things like that. But uh, we Let's not get... talk about penalties <laughs> in F1. Let's, let's yeah. not even go down that route. I Jesus. Mean, um, if, if you ever get to commentate with Paul Smith, who, is, uh, who also commentates me with, uh, on another series and race room, and of course there's a lot of virus and stuff as well, um, once you start a track limit discussion with him, good, uh, say goodbye to the next 25 minutes. Yeah, I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let the stewards crack on with that. I'm here to commentate and talk loads of rubbish. That's my job, and I very much enjoy it like that. Uh, Fiducci clearly had the pace, by the way, because he is starting to pull away here uh, from Ottaviani. Again, it's not, just not the way I like to see overtakes being done. I'm not going to treat the audience like they're stupid. Um, when I see something I don't like, I'm very much going to point that out. Uh, we're on board here with Gassner then. Um, we, yes, we are. So Gassner has got Lerner in behind. Of course, Lerner uh, is our... DTM Esports current champion, our reigning champion, currently down in what P13 as it stands. A late move there by Gassner um, to defend the position here. And Lerner yeah, just wants to try and get as many points as he possibly can. Uh, but ultimately, he is finding it very difficult to get past that BMW, which is you know about four times the size of every other car here. So it's very difficult indeed. Uh, I want to give a massive shout out to Florian Hasser. I think Hasser has been driver of the day for me. Considering, look at the front of the grid. Out of the top 11. We have got two cars that are not Ferrari. Florian Haas have qualified exceptionally well with P4, but to also go out there, and he's pr pretty much guaranteed now to get a P5 unless he bins it somewhere. I think it's been an exceptional performance. And I think Jack Keithley is another driver we need to be congratulating as well, because he's currently in P9, and it's just been a Ferrari show. I'm sure when we get to, I think the, the Lausitz ring, because it is going to be the oval turn one, the BMWs are going to be absolute rocket ships around there because it is basically an oval for half the circuit. So that is going to be fun to watch. So expect the BMWs to be strong next time out and expect them to be strong at Spa as well. Because you've got the long run along the Kemmel Strait, you've got the long run down towards Monchimont as well, and you've got the long run in towards La Source. So you've got plenty of opportunities for the BMWs to stretch their legs there as well. So I don't think it's all said and done for the Ferraris. I think they've got their two strongest tracks out of the way, uh, so to speak. But uh, back to, to the leader. Well, I'll just say back to the leader. Look at Gassner. Gassner under some severe pressure here. Lerner's going to be forced to go all the way around the outside. They've also got uh, Leonard Krippner just in behind as well. Uh, and he'll want to pick up any potential pieces uh, that are left behind by these two. Any crumbs that are going to be left behind by these two. And as you can see, Gassner has just got to defend that inside line. But you get to this part where it kinks to the right. And it really opens up for someone to dive up your inside. Because there's a little bit of a, an extension of the circuit. But then it closes up once again towards the apex. Lerner. Again, he's just trying to close Gassner onto the apex there, forcing him to be sluggish from the exit, and it's just not quite worked out. It might be worth going uh, on a bit of cockpit cam here uh, with Moritz Lerner and just see how he's trying to set this up. Uh, again, he's very, very quick through the chicane, although Gassner is very much even to that. So we head then down towards the final corner, and I'll try and explain to you what Lerner's trying to do here. 
So again, in towards that final corner. He's not going to dive it. He's just going to open it up the corner as best he possibly can, which means he can get on the power a lot earlier here than Gassner. But Gassner, again, is just very much equal to the advancements here of Lerner. So we head up across the grid and we head up towards that turn of one. You see the slipstream taking a huge effect here. And Lerner, again, will go around the outside. But look at how tight he forces Gassner to be on the apex. And again, he's not, well, Gassner is kind of controlling that situation, but Lerner does, again, force him to be right on the curb. He's not able to get that power down as much as he would like to, uh, but ultimately, Gassner is absolutely even to this right now. Uh, and to see Lerner struggling today, just because the car probably isn't the strongest out there, um, is one thing, but to see him not be the strongest BMW is quite another. Hassa and Gassner doing a sensational job. Ottaviani, by the way, and Fiducci are going absolutely crazy here for position. Uh, so I think you'll find that Fiducci, uh, he definitely hasn't done it on purpose, he's pretty much given up that position here, and it's now Ottaviani that takes B2. Yeah, it is, and uh, well, <laughs> uh, we're going to have another, well, well, how much time do we have left? 16, 16 minutes, 20 seconds? Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a thing now, uh, all the way until the end of the race. Who is going to finish P2 out of the, the 88 and the 46? Uh, Ottaviani and Fiducci. RHG Esports versus Team Fordzilla, if you want to look at it that way as well. as It's just going to be uh, being in the right place at the right time at this point. It's getting that run out of the final corner so you can make a more comfortable move in towards turn number one. We, we haven't seen anyone beat anyone to the line by getting a good run off the final corner just yet. So I don't think it's going to be a last corner run sprint race, drag race to the line type of thing uh, on the final lap of the race. but. I mean, never say never, as Fiducci had another big attempt there, still couldn't get anything done. I, I do want to draw the conversation, though, to the balance of performance uh, with regards to the, the options that the race administrators can put in to try and uh, tame a couple of the cars. Well, uh, for Spa, at least, which is two rounds from now, uh, the BMW will be getting only 98% of its available power. So it might not be as strong at, at uh, Spa as you may think. So yeah, that, that is a thing. We, we, we don't talk about it often with regards to the exact ballast and the engine restrictions uh, that are put in for each race, but that is certainly one thing to think about coming into that round. Yeah, 100%. It's, um, it's going to be a factor for sure. And again, what car they've chosen at the start of this championship is what they have to use throughout from start to finish, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, within the qualifying phase, they could have a different car for the first qualifying day. And if they didn't quite qualify, they could go for a second car uh, or a different car for the second one. But now they are stuck with the car that they chose. So they would have chosen a car that is, of course, going to be the strongest across the whole championship. And actually, um, they didn't have really any time, to be honest, to test the car as well because the car came out and they had to have picked a car because the season started, right? So it was, um, yeah, it's a few people were maybe kicking themselves thinking, oh, you know, I probably did pick the wrong car. And they've kind of gambled. But for the most part, it seems that like the Ferrari is the overall better of them. Uh, I'd like to say that that's, that's, you know, necessarily the reason why certain drivers are winning. That's certainly not the case with Kevin Singer. I think you could put him on a, on a unicycle and he'd still be bloody quick. It's just the way he is. Um, but this is the real battle right now. P2 in the offering here, Ottaviani and Fiducci. And we've already seen Singer make one big mistake here today, considering he spun out from the lead in race number one and only managed to finish in P2 in the end. Uh, these two, ultimately, if there is that mistake to happen again, they've got to be ready to pick up those kind of pieces. I'm just preoccupied by the mental image of Kevin Seagy on a unicycle at the moment as uh, <laughs> we're looking back through the order. Uh, Gassner, Lona, uh, Lona, and indeed now Krippner um, still scrapping over this P12. Um, they've been at it for a while, haven't they? Uh, the, this, this, this trio of BMWs. Yeah, and that's the, that's the whole strength of this championship, right? It doesn't matter whether you're you know, P1 or, or P21. They've all qualified for a reason. They're all very similarly paced. We saw the difference between uh, P1 and P28 today being seven tenths of a second. So, yeah, if you have a poor qualifying session and you put yourself out of position, you're not that out of position in terms of absolute raw pace. You are, you are still going to be up against the match. So it becomes very, very difficult. We've seen that from Oakville. Well, he went and won race number one, qualified very poorly for race number two. He's currently residing in P10. So, yeah, it's... Um, Qualifying is absolutely key. As Gasner runs terribly wide there. If Lerner re reads that, he might get himself an opportunity. Not quite able to read it. Krippner, by the way, catching up as well. And then we've got Rashall, who wants to come back for some more action from what we saw earlier on. 
Yeah, so, uh, well, now's go time if you're in this train of cars. By the way, this train of cars mostly comprises of Dory Sports machines, <laughs> by the way. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things that's going to work out in their favor. you got Morris Lerner, you got Krippner, you got uh, Krippner, you got Braschel there. Uh, as well as cracking open the insides is Morris Lerner. Not Ooh, quite able nearly. to get the overlap down the pin straight, but still close enough for a move into turn one. And that's what he needs. He needs to just have a bit of an overlap on the inside of that corner. So he's got the inside through turn one. He's just not been able to. He's, he's being forced to go around the outside every single time. This is the closest he's been. He's finally got the overlap here as well with the nose in front. And can he keep this overlap on the exit? He can on the power nicely. Gasner almost sends him into the wall there. I think there was a perfect amount of room for Lerner to work with. So that is very clever by Gasner. And ultimately, he holds on to that position. And it is five cars then battling for this one position. And it's Soon to be six, I think, because we've got the medium up Ferrari just behind the Bodin. So that's going to be interesting to see if he can catch up. I think the Audi then uh, is also going to get themselves involved here in P18. But Gasner right now is just a cork in a bottle. 11 minutes to go. Uh, there are some points to be had from drivers behind. Lerner's just trying to grab one effectively by getting up into P12. But Gasner is doing everything in his power to keep hold of that spot. Yeah, he is. Uh, I think this will again be a featured battle for the end as there's another attempt from Lona. Not got the overlap this time, but he goes for the surprise move down the inside at turn number one. Has he overcommitted to the exit of the corner though? Well, it's going to be a little bit of runner speed to Gasta, but Gasta can't maintain the overlap. And uh, well, Lona, you just waited there patiently for that inside to open. It did, and he instantly stuck his nose down there. Sensational move there from Moritz Lerner. Again, ever the opportunist there. And again, I'm watching it back. I've got the stream live here. so a few seconds back, so I get to see it twice. And yeah, it's one of those that I think if Gassner doesn't open that door up wider, it'll be one of those where I'm going, oh, that's a horrendous move there. The contact being terrible. But I think Gassner realized that if he does close the door, he probably is going to get tangled in something that may lose him more than that one position. And it's actually a very, very clever driver from Gassner. As we see a two by two here, Leonard Krippner and Rachel. Rachel Schreier, well, he's actually got a head here of the number 66 up towards the breaking zone for one. And he hits the apex perfectly well there. Uh, they've got Whitford then in the Balash Esports being uh, very much looked at by Bodin. Uh, in the medium mark in number seven or P17 in number 87 as Ottaviani then holding on to what is P2 Fiducci looking to reassert his dominance in P2 not quite close enough here I don't think the RAG car is going to miss the apex here and uh, ultimately sort of blocks the chance of Fiducci to go back up under the inside but again nine minutes 45 seconds to go the two Italians here 12.9 seconds off of the leader but ultimately they are really not battling for that they are battling for this P2 Indeed they are. Uh, Seiji, well, he, he's basically in a different league at this point. They should just make a, a, a premium DTM Esports Championship where Seiji's the only driver, because that's, that's what the uh, um, that's what the uh, that's what his pace is like. Actually, just make him a, a, as his own separate class. There we go. That's 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 more indicative of the difference between him and the and the rest of the field here. Um, so. Uh, He's more, it's, I'll, I'll bring in another comparison here if I haven't beat this dead horse enough. Um, it's uh, he's like he's in a GTE car compared to all these GT3s. Let's just say that. So Ottaviani, <laughs> well, like you said, Luke, it is all the battle for P2 now. And I'm still none the wiser with regards to who's going to finish ahead in this one. I mean, Ottaviani's done great on the defense so far. Um, but it, it only takes that one time where it cracks and uh, Fiducci's uh, going to be able to get himself back up into second place. I'll tell you one thing that's impressive from these two is the fact that they've been battling like this side by side pretty much or bumper to bumper for the entirety of this race. But they have just not missed a, a beat in terms of Pinches. Pinches has not been able to close up to them. They've managed that gap to be around about three, four seconds the entirety of this race. And he's pretty much been on his own apart from maybe the first 15 minutes where him and Hassa kind of really going at it so very impressive from these two italians and you find a bit more pace you maybe find a bit more pace in qualifying i think it's probably more appropriate here start ahead of siggy and you can manage the race from the front i think that's a chance here for these two to potentially 
you know, go out there and win this championship. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a really tough ask. And I think the actual raw race pace is pretty good. As Bowden then has indeed just caught onto the back here of Whitford. Uh, the number 60 there is Whitford, who is racing for Balash Esports. And then we've got uh, indeed Bowden, who I believe is Balash as well, to be honest. Uh, but he's in the media marked car, the sponsored car, because he's a wild card driver. Dennis will turn up one here. I think Whitford may run out of road here. He does. Runs out wide. Bowden is not quite close enough here. The tyres really will be on the ragged edge at this stage of the race, that's for sure. As we head then down in towards the chicane, and it is still Whitford in 16th and Bowden in 17th. It is, you know, battle for minor positions, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're still running their own race. The drivers back here will have maybe some slightly different goals to the, the drivers further forwards. And uh, I'm, I am just uh, double checking how far the uh, points extend down to. Uh, the points do extend down to P21, so there's still, albeit a small amount, points on offer for positions all the way back here. It's not until you get to Yarshell at P22 where you're starting to score Nilpoir, as far as this race is concerned. So, uh, you know, this all matters in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, 100%. And I'd say there's 29 drivers in this championship, but I would also say there's like a separate championship for the wildcard drivers as well. Um, like, who's, yeah. it's almost like they're rookies in, in my eyes. They've come from the separate uh, championship, maybe not quite on the same level as the top drivers in this championship. But, you know, I think the, the media marked cars will be battling within themselves for the season and Bowden is for me being the star of those three drivers this season as the battle P2 still is as intense as it's ever been as we come through the chicane it looked like there might have been a slight uh, little look up the inside there by Fiducci but not quite six minutes to go here you've got to be patient um, again an opportunity will open itself up and actually for the first time I think you'll find that Pinches is starting to catch up here so a couple of laps with these two running side by side it may look like it could become sort of a three uh, horse race quite literally the Ferrari horses uh, battling for that P2. Florian Hassa then and uh, Naji are very close as well. So when it's all said and done, is there the potential for these cars to start catching up to this battle for P2? I think there absolutely is, uh, but it's going to take a hell of an effort. There's always the potential. It's just whether or not that's the reality. As with many things, it's uh, it requires a, a certain set of circumstances. It requires Vizucci and Ottaviani to continue on their extended side-by-side -side battles for Pinches to get anywhere near involved in this one. Um, who knows what might happen in the final five minutes. These two Italians have certainly not been afraid of uh, getting up in each other's faces. Um, so, I mean, it, it, we're on for potentially quite exciting final five minutes in the battle for P2. And of course, there's battles behind as well. you got Rachel Kribner, uh, Bowden involved in that battle. You've got Dornadin and Bringer also going side by side. So uh, there's no shortage of places to look in the final couple of laps here at the Norris Ring. Yeah, 100%. These two have really been the stars of the show in terms of watching from home. Um, and being excited about it. Siggy's been boring, leaving out by 13 seconds. And you know, there's one person who will not care one bit about being boring, and that is Kevin Siggy. He will not care one iota. Uh, but it is between these two, 4P2. It just looked like Ottaviani has just found a little bit of extra oomph towards the final couple of minutes of this race, although they've got some back markers to do with. Hinches is definitely closing up behind. It's now 2.4 seconds, the difference. He just really wants these two to battle for position. It's really all about how desperate Fiducci is going to get uh, battling in P3, as it sounds, there's a big mistake there from the RHG uh, eSports car, just sliding that rear out. Again, it's not gonna hurt him too much with only four minutes to go in terms of the longevity of the tires. Uh, but in terms of the pace on this long straight up towards turn number one, it really will hurt. Uh, so Fiducci then is very, very close, but not quite close enough. And again, you've got to be patient, sit behind and wait for the mistake from the REG driver. And Connery at this stage is going to take a mistake from that P2. Potentially. Um, that would be the easiest way for Gianmarco Fiducci to head his way through. We have seen a couple of manufactured passes here today. Um, it, it's tough to do around here, but can be done. It just requires a little bit of uh, uh, little, a little bit of intelligence on the on the brakes in towards turn number one, mostly. Um, just uh, you know, getting yourself in the right place at the right time, maintaining the overlaps, especially if you do find yourself to the inside through turn number one. If you do, if you are able to hold on to that then potentially you're looking good coming through the second sector. But, you know, time is starting to run out for these guys. Um, Ottaviani and Fiducci, they're going to need to settle their differences at some point soon. Uh, Fiducci, of course, I think he's going to have to go all-out attack 
all these top, top, final couple of laps. It still has a slight buffer back to Pinchez. Still two seconds, so still something that he can work with. But uh, I think for Fiducci, he, he, if he has any hope of going for P2, then he, he needs to drive the wheels off of that thing. Serves him right, though, really, for typing in the YouTube chat, I hate being in P2. <laughs> well, there you go. He You're in P3 that. now. He might finish yeah, that. Yeah, like, it, well, what I'm saying is, like, he, would, he could be in P2, but he said he hates it, so he's getting karma right now. So he's stuck in P3. Um, yeah, Ottaviani doing what he needs to do. Again, Fiducci has got ahead a couple of times, but he's not been able to maintain it. It didn't look like he was going to be able to drive away. It just wasn't able uh, to happen for him. But Ottaviani, in this sort of last 10 minutes, has kind of been able to stretch his legs here. Slipstreaming does seem like it's a bit of a factor, uh, especially with the, the tire wear on the exit of the final corner being such a, a problem which means that if you can just get that power down a little bit better than the car in front, you will slowly catch up in towards turn number one. Um, as it stands, by the way, Siggy has taken some time off his lap times. He's now only 12 seconds in the lead. I say only 12. That is a ridiculous, ridiculous um, gap there. How many laps has it been in this race, Connery? Oh, um, 70. Wow. Yeah. That is ridiculous. Uh, we've got, what, two? No, it's going to be three laps remaining, I think. Siggy would have crossed the line uh, 12 seconds in advance of this. So, yeah, it will be, I believe, uh, around about three laps remaining as these boys cross the line. But I'll tell you what, Fiducci has got an absolute god run here up towards turn number one. Ottaviani's going to hold that inside line in that number 88. He's going to go on the brakes very, very late there. Uh, it doesn't quite hit the apex, but it's not anything to be too worried about in terms of stewards. He's good to go. Defends it valiantly once again. And realistically, we've seen a couple of dives up to the inside into the, towards the final corner. But it's just so much harder to indeed get it stuck on the exit of the final corner. It's so much easier to do it through turn one number one so i wouldn't expect there to see, expect to see a move into that final corner the siggy is actually caught up to the back of the pack so that's why he is losing uh, a load of time got the number 33 just up ahead of him the sole audi out there on the grid still two to go so he crossed the line yeah. with about a minute to go the lap times have been about 50 seconds so unless siggy parks the bus here on the final lap and finishes two seconds ahead of ottobiani then uh, he, he has the potential to end this race early but i don't think he would want to no, well, if, if we saw, saw last week there was the potential for that to happen and it didn't happen. So, uh, again, I don't think they're too They're not worried about seconds or anything. If you're 12 seconds in the league, you're not worried about it, right? You just want to get it. Just just drive. If there's an extra 50 seconds to race, there's an extra 50 seconds to race. I think the only thing you've got to be worried about is the back marker, um, potentially ruining your race if you're Siggy at this stage. Uh, but, again, these two are very, very close. If we go on board with Siggy and see exactly what his plan is here as he comes across the line, yeah, we are going to get at least... One more lap remaining. He's on the last lap of the race. Star of the show today. Unfortunately, he made a mistake for himself. The rest of the field were very thankful for his mistake in race number one. It was very unsiggy like in terms of we just don't ever see him make mistakes like he did. He was in the lead by three full seconds and he spun the car at the final corner only eight minutes into the race. So it wasn't a case of that his tires were going to be an absolute mess. He just wasn't able to, uh, well, just, just made a, a silly little error, I guess. Maybe took his eye off the ball ever so slightly but has he ever made up for it in race number two and well he came into this race today five points in the lead in the championship and Moritz Lerner was second our current champion Moritz Lerner was in second but Moritz Lerner has had a terrible day today he's only 12th position in this race I think he's finished around about P12 in race number one someone who doesn't care about that is Kevin Siggy the team red line driver crosses the line takes his second win of the season and undoubtedly will be the leader of the championship heading into races five and six second spot then will go to Alessandro Ottaviani uh, in the RAG esports car and it will be third then for team Ford Zilla Ducci uh, then in fifth and sixth or oh, sorry fourth and fifth is Pinchez in fourth and Hatta in sixth they've got Naji in sixth position uh, sorry, Hassel was fifth. We've got Vermeulen then, who's going to finish in seventh position. Keith Lee finishes in eighth spot. Then we've got Dinya and Hookvelt, who was winner from race number one, picks up a P10. Did not qualify well here today, though, uh, in race number two, but managed to still get a top 10. Our DTM Esports current champion, Morris Lerner, has had a day to forget. He's got the number one on the car. If he wants to keep that number one on the car going into next season, he has got a whole load of work to indeed do over the next few weeks weeks. Kevin Siggy, though, for Team Redline, takes the victory, takes the checkered flag. Ottaviani, Beducci, Inches, Florian Hassa, Naji, Vermeulen, Heathley, Inya, and Hoogveld are your top 10. Connery, it's been the Siggy show. He made a mistake in race number one, but boy, did he make up for it in race number two.
Yeah, he absolutely did. Siggy, uh, th that pace was phenomenal uh, from the Slovakian driver, uh, Slovenian driver, excuse me. I'll get my countries right at some point. Um, it, it's, uh, uh, he was absolutely untouchable here today. Like, absolutely untouchable. You even saw that in qualifying. We were expecting a close run thing uh, with the qualifying at the at the end of these sessions, but it just wasn't for P1. For every other position, yeah, sure, they were within hundreds, thousands of a seconds of each other, but see, you know, dominant in qualifying, two tenths of a second ahead of everyone else, then gets to the race, pulls a 12 second gap at, at the very end of the event, a, a, a track as short as this. It is incredibly, incredibly impressive, extending his advantage in the championship, of course, now. Uh, I don't know what else you could say, apart from that little blip in, uh, in, the, in the sprint race where he did make the mistake and fall back a spot. Um, I don't see any other sort of MVP of the uh, of the day than, than Kevin Siggy. Yeah, absolutely not. I, I completely agree with you there. Uh, he made that mistake. The rest of the field are going to be looking at him going, oh, wow, Kevin Siggy's got a chink in his arm, but we've got a chance. And then he goes, no, no, you haven't, I'm afraid. <laughs> Come back with that very dominant performance there in race number two. And again, asserting his dominance. Team Redline are just having uh, an incredible 2022, uh, especially Kevin Siggy himself. Again, a big shout out to Christopher Hoogver, who did win race number one today, his first ever win in the DTM Esports. Uh, so congratulations to him. Did not go quite so well in race number two. We're going to head off for a quick, sh well, short break here uh, with some commercials, and then we'll be able to wrap up the show and hopefully give you the final standings after today's two races. Auto Hero ist dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. <lacht> Well, it says it's coming tomorrow, the DTM pack in Race Room, but it's already out, just to let you know. So if you want to go and get it, head to Race Room uh, on your browser or in the game, and you can go and indeed buy yourself some DTM cars. Make sure you buy the in-game currency, though. 
because you get more for your money. A little tip there from me. Connery, it's been a fantastic day uh, too for the DTM Esports. Kevin Siggy again asserting his dominance, but uh, him aside, is there anyone out there that's sort of maybe said to you that they could challenge Siggy moving forward in this championship? It's difficult to tell, uh, especially given that Fiducci uh, didn't have a, a particularly fantastic performance in the first week of competition. He got himself a double P3 uh, here today, which is is, a, is indeed a, a, a good haul of points. However, he was only P8 coming out of the, the previous round, so he's able to recover that somewhat. But uh, Siggy is is very, very, very har far ahead, even at this very early stage of the championship. That is going to be very difficult for, for, for anyone, really, uh, to be able to challenge him. Of course, you know, we, we'll see the ebb and flow of the season. We'll see, again, the BMWs inevitably at some races get themselves back towards the top of the order. So we can we have other people in the conversation with regards to um, race leading positions. Uh, but Siggy has made a statement here today. Um, uh, without that mistake in the sprint race, it would have been a double race win easily. You know, easily. It would have not been under any sort of question. So uh, that that does potentially scare uh, a couple of the drivers. They, they know they need to get the rest of the season pitch perfect now to have any chance in the championship. Lone is certainly thinking that as, as he has had a, a bit of a mare today. Well, there's two prizes, of course. We've got the DTM champion. Like you, you, Only one person can have that, but top five uh, effectively win the prize. They get to go to a sighting event with DTM this oh. year. Uh, as we can see there, there was a podium. Um, but yeah, we Siggy took P1 in race number two, Ottaviani, and then Fiducci uh, taking home P2 and indeed P3. But the prize is the top five in this championship will head to one of the DTM events this year, a sighting uh, event, and they will then be judged as to who is the best candidate to win the outright prize, which is a 2023 seat in the DTM trophy, fully financed. So, yeah, it's a huge prize for these drivers, and, yeah, they're all going to be vying for it. So it's not only P1 that you should be going for. Top five is what you are aiming for. So it's not all lost for Lerner and Ottaviani and Fiducci. They're going to be looking very good to get themselves in amongst that as well. Um, if you indeed want to watch DTM, which starts at the end of next month, then make sure that you do indeed head to dtm.grid and uh, make sure you've got them bookmarked on the website. Make sure that you do indeed follow uh, them on the socials, dtm underscore picks for Instagram, at dtm on Twitter. Uh, make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel as well. They always post content on there. Um, yeah, it's going to be an incredible season. We've seen the first four races so far. We've still got plenty more to come. We've got eight races to go in the DTM Esports Championship calendar. Uh, I have been Luke Crane. We have spent a great amount of time here with Connery Maddock. Hopefully you've had as much fun as I have, Connery. Yep, I, I absolutely have. Uh, we got the rest of the season up on screen. Next uh, next time how we head to round number three at the Dowsitz Ring, and then it's going to be a sh very short amount of time, a couple of days, in fact, before we go to Spa at Franco Champs for round number four. So we'll get uh, uh, rounds under quick succession here in the DTM Esports Championship for round number three and round number four. But I, I certainly enjoyed the our time out here at the Norris Ring. Uh, i got to hope the, the Dowsitz Ring uh, is uh, the same as, if not better. Absolutely. I'm sure it will be. It's the Oval Turn 1 variant as well, so expect the BMWs to turn up and play there. Anyway, hopefully you've all enjoyed this, guys. We'll be back in a couple of weeks' time, and then it is a crazy April where we will see all four rounds in one month. Thank you very much for watching. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channels here, uh, and we will catch you in April for rounds five and six of the DTM Esports 2022.